Anime 2021. So, finally time to talk about the best anime last year. And we already know which is the best anime though, so I can spoil it here immediately, guys. Uh, but otherwise, I would say this rule here. Uh, we're not going to talk about these animes that have way too many episodes. I feel it's like cheating. So, unfortunately, no Brick Clover, um, no uh, Fruit Basket. I kind of felt it was too much, honestly, on the limit there, so I skip over that. Oh, that was a great season. And, uh, I mean, if we, if we talked about old animes, right, that has many, many episodes, obviously Best Dad would have been the best anime this year, otherwise. <laughs> Number 10, Fumetsu no Anata. So I'm going to explain, of course, every anime here, watch the them and so on, right? But I think with this anime here, unfortunately, uh, with number 10 here, I have something to spoiler, right, basically. Not too much spoiler, but like, it's spoiling itself, because this anime, I really did believe it's going to be much higher on my list, right? If you asked me half a year ago, I thought it was going to be much, much higher. But basically, if you haven't seen it, the last arc really, really sucks. Like, it's terrible. Like, it's a zero out of ten arc. It's a completely ruined show, honestly. So it's like one of the best shows this year for the first 15 or so episodes. And then it's like, okay, yeah. <laughs> Don't watch the last arc. Uh, but anyway, what's it about then? Fumetsu no Anata. It's heavily carried by Gugu, for that matter, of course. But otherwise, then it's about uh, an immortal being that... Uh, he cannot die, of course, but every time someone basically close to him dies, he becomes them, and then he learns to experience the one, right? And he travels around, and it's honestly kind of formulaic, though. It's a very, very good and sad anime, but I think it's formulaic also when with top 10, because the basic formula is that main character meets someone, right? They die, and then, you know, <laughs> and then he meets someone else, and then die! It's just a very, very sad anime, it's a very interesting storyline and uh, interesting world building and so on. But I do think that also made it a little worse in the end, that even though it is very, very sad and that it's a tear-jerking anime, one of the saddest anime this year, on the same time, after you see a few characters die, you're like, well, I wonder if the next character's gonna die. Yeah, it's starting getting definitely quite formulaic as well. But the last arc, though, Yanada Island, is, is terrible. I'm going into this video here, but it just really breaks so much characterization and the storyline and world building and everything right i am still excited though to see season two of mess nonata but um hoping it goes back to kind of what we had previously though it's more part of the anime though that's great the comedy is that's really funny it has some actually some really nice quirky jokes as well right and uh why it has its sadness <laughs> the sadness it. and it's a lot of wholesome scenes Boogie! Easily one of the best anime this year, of course, is Boogie Woogie. This is the scene that carries the whole anime. Nothing else is good as that. This one anime is called something like, I don't know, something in the year, right? But it has this scene called Boogie Woogie, and that is the greatest thing ever in anime history. Um, but it's kind of funny, though, because when I was, I'll put it out here, when I was interviewed, right, uh, Japanese television, I mean, more than once, but whatever, and uh, when I was interviewed specifically, Talked about this anime, Yusuke Kaisen, uh, and they asked me, "Who's your favorite character? Right? Who's the best character in the anime?" And this is before the Boogie Boogie scene, so I put it out here. So I was like, "The man of culture, Tordo." I was like, "This is the best character. Clearly, the man with five thousand IQ, with the man with idol buttocks. Come on, he's the main best character." Right? And, I, and I was like, really, I was really hyping up Tordo. And again, I'm, a, I'm an unknown, right? So I, the bank, I was like, this guy is clearly the coolest character. He's going to be the best character in this anime. So easily. And that was like a few weeks before this actually happened. So I was like, what did I tell you guys? Boogie woogie. And, but anyway, it's Kaisen. Of course, also add this year. I felt a little off putting this anime in the list, honestly. So maybe it's one of the reasons I put it lower, honestly. Because I was like, it kind of add last year. I mean, two years ago, when this that's right. Half ass, but at the same time, you do have animes that have second seasons, all right? As I mentioned earlier, though, right? Some animes I don't have in the list because they're like season five or whatever, right? Uh, especially Fruit Basket, I felt was like too many episodes to be in here. Um, but uh, yeah, like it was, I still think this is the best moment, right? Uh, I know this won a lot of people's anime, best anime last, right? But I felt that to me was like, yeah, it wasn't bad, the first part of the anime. But again, in my opinion, this is the best part of it. Right? That's why I can have it here. I, because honestly, first I was actually not going to have this kind of deal. I was like, okay, it's one of the best animes of 9, of, you know, 2020. Uh, yeah. 
That was a little bit how I was thinking first. It's like, oh, it's the year before or something. But I, I, I kept iterating back to, but this is the best scene of this anime, Boogie Woogie. This is the best scene. I mean, again, I liked the anime before too, right? But this is the scene where it really was like, this is one of the best scenes this year, or it will be the best scene this year, right? So I was like, no, oh, this really carries it. But at the same time, though, uh, it doesn't just always I feel strange when the anime is like a little two uh, But anyway, what is it about then? It's about a guy, it's Shonen, right? It's about a guy, he can see ghosts, it's like Bleach, uh, and, uh, you know, he can fight stuff, right? And uh, they fight stuff. Uh, no, I don't want to spoil too much here, but obviously, I think the weakness of Yusuke Kaisen, let me stop with the bad stuff here then, is that it is very Shonen, right? It is about a guy that uh, discovers he can he eats an evil god fingers, then he gets cursed, and now he has to fight ghosts and demons and so on, right? And then he meets a bunch of cool friends, like his brother here, and then they fight demons or ghosts or yokais or whatever, right? Whatever you call them, uh, together. And he has amazing fights, one of the best shonen fights in Italy, right? And the visual of the mappa is amazing and so on. And it, it looks, you know, astonishingly good, right? And the comedy is pretty good. I think the comedy is not the best shonen I've seen, not the worst either. And uh, the characters are really good, right? Really strong characters, strong female characters. Not big lower levels for female characters, but definitely up there. And, uh, you know, generally very interesting cast. Like a cool panda, uh, mecha, wood guy, and so on. He has some really good side characters, course, cool sensei, and so on. So definitely it's like a more new, modern shonen, right? But I still think it has... The one of the reasons why I wouldn't put it super high in my list, even though some people could have it... I, I, I guess the best anime this year, right? Or whatever, last year then. Is because in the end, I'm not saying a shonen couldn't win, but I, I think in the end, though, it is quite like, well, I've seen it all before, right? This is just really well done, yeah. I think then, then for me, it's like, it's an anime where, if you like shonen, this is cool, and I love shonen, right? So, of course, I love this anime. But I've seen it all before, I think, right? This is just done better, I guess, than many other animes. And uh, it looks incredibly good, right? So, at least from a visual standpoint, it's one of the best anime. Except, of course, one other anime that I'm going to have in this list that feels even better visual anime. Where I think objectively it's better. No, objectively it's a better visual, obviously. And that's coming higher list coming here soon, though. So, what is Idaten God of the Lost Peace? Well, that's one of the craziest anime this year. It's almost my number one in one way, no, obviously. But it's like, man, this anime is crazy. If I just gave an anime on the crazy meter, it definitely would be the winner. It has the coolest grandma ever, uh, Bavarin, it's a badass, super well trained, like Melona, but it's even older, yeah, and so on. It is, the anime is just weird to explain. So first of all, it has a lot of, okay, dark, edgy yokes, okay, a lot of edgy yokes, sex yokes, rare yokes, and So it takes a stomach to like the anime, but I think if you like this kind of yoke, right, if, you, if you're into this kind of uh, dark kind of comedy, then it's one of the best animes ever, because it has no boundaries. That's one, it has no boundaries, that's the big thing with anime. But anyway, what is about them? It's about gods fighting demons, right? Uh, it's like some kind of weird shonen, shonen, so where everything is allowed and everything happens. But the interesting thing with the anime, I think, particularly so, is that the gods are evil. Let's just get the story, the gods are evil. We're following the protagonists, the main characters, they're pretty evil. The demons are evil too, though. So it isn't like the demons are good guys, no, no, they're both evil, and they're fighting each other, right? And the more the story progresses, the more we're gonna see from the uh, demon's perspective, right? Like, oh, okay, what's happening, and so on. And uh, they're both doing bad, cra bad shit, crazy stuff. It's a bad, sh it's bad shit, crazy anime. And I think honestly, one of the best anime this year, because it's just really, really crazy. You never know what to expect, right? Everything, again, everything has a no limit, this anime. And it's, and it's interesting, you're following these, like, really, really crazy gods, they're OP, right? They're called OP fantasy main characters, but they're also definitely the bad guys. But they're also fighting other bad guys, and there is no really good guy. It's everyone who's kind of weird. Yeah? <laughs> so, but anyway, I think it's a really good anime. Definitely one of the most unique animes I've ever seen in my life. And uh, for me, definitely one of the top 10 anime this year. Nagidoro, baby! See, I don't care what people say, it's one of the best anime this year! No, but it's kind of funny. So, this is a comedy anime, right? A Senpai Koi anime, we know you have this, right, you know, I love my Usaki panels and so on, right? But this is, in my opinion then, where obviously I'm objective correct, as I mentioned earlier, this is the best Senpai Koi anime out there. Uh, we also had Senpai Sanoi this year, right? This is severely much better, and that, this anime is much, much better than Futaba-chan's poor anime. No, yeah, that anime was fine, but it's not even compared to Nagatoro. Nagatoro, I think, is the best, again, uh, and... 
I would say the best straight up comedy romance anime uh, this year, probably, right? This is not an anime I guess you could argue say is comedy romance, but it has more than that, I think. So maybe sort of a genre, so to speak. But, uh, I mean, this anime is amazing. And would I have buy this stuff if Nagatoro wasn't the best girl this year? Come on, look at it, look at it. Oh, would I buy. Would I get myself a huge Nagatoro poster if she wasn't an amazing best girl this season, this year, everything? Uh, no, but like this anime is really, really funny. It, it's about then, of course, a senpai and his kawaii, Nagatoro san, that it is super, super attractive, as is super annoying, right? And the comedy is just amazing. And I know people hate this anime, though. like one of my good friends, he really hates this anime. He despises it. I think it's disgusting and so right. She bullies him, makes him cry and so on. But um, it's like, again a quiet taste, I guess. Right? Um, it's not much explained, really, honestly, about the actual plot, right? It's basically just uh, a senpai, it's an art guy, and he has this super attractive, cute kawaii that is clearly in love with him, right? She keeps teasing him. It's one of these teasing anime, they're manly, like this young, right? But again, this is just the best one. I think, I think, I think, honestly, from like a Again, from a premise standpoint, we have seen this before, right? We've seen it with Usaki. We've also seen it with uh, Kuru made right this year as well. Also a pretty good anime. Almost made top 10, honestly. Uh, Butchan. Yeah, it has some really good episodes. Some good drama and so on. Definitely also very close to my uh, top 10. It was like top 15. Uh, but this, and I, for that matter, I think uh, Kuru made is better than Butchan's uh, Black I mean, made better than uh, uh, Sampai 1, right? But um, again, the premise is there, the former lie is there, right? An annoying Kohai that's usually very attractive, teasing her senpai and getting a lot of, you know, romantic stuff, so on, she gets natural rare, blah, blah, so on. Uh, and then it has some wholesome moments, right? But I see that Nagataro, again, she's the, she's the best one. She makes it the best jokes. I think the reason why, if you haven't seen it, is because she pushes it to the limit, right? She's always living on the edge with jokes, so on. I find some other anime, except for Usaki, it's a too safe, right? Uh, and and then uh, that's funny, right? Yeah. Nagataro is definitely on the edge, and I think it makes the jokes better. But I can also see why some people hate the anime, right? Because she's very on the edge, and then people get offended, right? So, but that's for me, at least how comedy is. That you offensive comedy is usually the best kind of comedy, right? Kind of either than too, yeah. But um, again, I think this is this genre of uh, teasing romance thing definitely has become its own genre. And also have the other genre of, uh, I guess, the uh, silent, quiet girl, right? We see Komishan, hit the bushy and so on. So you, you kind of have this, like, how I get it, I call it, uh, sub-categories of comedy, right? Uh, and this definitely has become a, <laughs> I don't know, re, uh, what's it, formula of uh, genre comedy that we keep seeing. But then, I keep saying it here, Nagatori is the best one. It's the best one, yeah. It, of this... Couple of anime in this genre, and this is, I think, it's like, oh, this is. I, I have never seen anyone be this good as Nagatoro before. But otherwise, I can't explain that much to here. It's just a really, really, really funny anime. Uh, the jokes are amazing, and uh, yeah, it can't, I mean, I'm crying laughing every episode. Right? It's probably for me the purest, in the purest comedy form, I think it's the best comedy this year. And that's what, of course, makes my top 10 list. Rimaru sama! Rimaru sama! Of course. Of course, our top 10 anime, this is guys, Slime, the Isekai, <laughs> the Slime, the, not Isekai, but the Slice of Life one, when they just kind of hang out and they take Rimeru's balls and they you know, go form and so on, uh, <laughs> it's actually pretty good, but no, of course, I am joking guys, talking about the course, the other Slime, part 2, Slime, right, we had part 1, part 2, and 2 uh, this year, and uh, yeah, it is, I would say de facto, probably, more or less, right, the best uh, OP Isekai Fantasy. And I know that sounds like a little bit like, yeah, but most of them are crap, though. I don't know. But there are, there are a lot of them, right? There are a lot of in this genre. And I think the slime probably does it the best, right? Um, I, one reason why I like slime a lot is because one of my favorite video games is Sukoden. Uh, where you build your own empire and so on, right? And yeah, slime clearly fits in that role, right? Everyone loves him. He makes his wars and he recruits an only a blacksmith and all these guys can make blacksmith and so on. So it's basically, it's a world, not world building as in. You know, fantasy world building. It has it as well, of course. But I mean, it's more like building your empire kind of anime. But I think the slime does that really, really well. So that's the first kind of premise of slime, right? He's an isekai. He recruits people. And then the more people recruit, the bigger the empire gets, right? And they're all really funny characters and so on. And there's a great joke so on. However, let's talk about some of the bad stuff. It's like, that being said, all right, um, 
Slime has a lot of questions about scenes, chat. He owns them. No, uh, jokes aside, um, for before talking about the good stuff of Slime, right? When he kind of gets the bad guy, he's built up and he's bad. He's like, come on, you go, big opposition, bitch, crap, and so on. Before, here's the thing, I have to point this out though. And honestly, I would say I was really struggling, honestly, but putting Slime in the top 10, genuinely speaking, even though I put it kind of in the middle here, and we also be and so on, right? Because, let's be honest here, right? Now people don't say here, Slime has like four, five, maybe six, seven episodes that you can skip, right? Like, it's double season, right? So to speak. 24, 23 episodes, right? This season, 24, I believe it is. Uh, but whatever, so, you know, two seasons, so to speak, uh, in this year. A lot of episodes, but you can probably skip this fourth completely, and it doesn't make, make a difference. Right? There's one episode where they explain the whole dragon backstory, and the next episode is <laughs> the exact same thing again. The first family is like recapping the last episode or something. It's just really weird, not even like editing it. So I have to say that, right? Honestly, I feel I'm. I mean, I'm a big slime fan, right? You know, I like slime, I watch slime, and I, you know, I think it was one of the best animes, and these kind of things are amazing, right? Coming to that soon here. But I think, but, but to be fair, I almost kind of feel like I should put slime as, like, kind of under top 10, honestly, because, yeah, there were, there were too many episodes where I feel like, okay, this is actually not that, uh, you know, nothing is happening, right? You're talking and so on. But, and, and not to say that you can't have dialogue, it has to be action, that's my point. But I'm just saying it's a lot of like almost filler episode where like nothing just happens. Like it's not even fun. It's like okay, it is. Uh, but it's followed by episodes, right? Where they have the slowest pace ever. So it's more about the slow pace thing, and then suddenly they have a really high pace. But it's mostly that they have a few episodes where the time feels like it stands still, right? And I say it here before I talk about the good stuff again. But I, but I think it's fair to say that 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 is the reason why it's not in my top three or whatever. It's definitely not because that is. That is, yeah, there were way too much of that stuff. But if you ignore that, I mean, Slime has some of the best, yeah. So it, satisfying conclusion scenes, I guess. Yeah, I was like, get that bad guy right. And this is more than one step in the Slime uh, in this season. So this is really, I don't want to spoil too much here, but it's really, you know, some really satisfying uh, conclusion scenes, right? After those two, unfortunately, slow build-ups, right? And otherwise, Slime has really good world building, of interesting characters, right? Not just his crew, whatever, his family, his house. But also these other lords or the demon lords, all the characters and so on. Especially then season two we are coming into Valpurgis night, we kinda see all the other demon lords, a little bit of their personality and powers and so on. So like, this is a really generally a very nice world building anime as well. But, but um, as I said, even though it has this amazing conclusional scenes, it has a little too long time to get there, right? And I feel that it's kinda obvious honestly, because there's some episode where you feel like Okay, this episode should probably be faster, but they really want to end on that line. You know, they want to end on he's like, let's go. You want, they want to end on that specific timing, right? Where Rimmer is is like, this is the line, and then the episode's over, right? And you kind of feel they got dragging their heels just to get to that specific time to end it. Instead of, you know, doing that scene earlier, and then maybe add another five, ten minutes, right? So that, I think, is very noticeable. But uh, it, it's, I feel I'm very negative here. But it's like, but I, I think that's fair to say that Slime is very, very good. But it is lowered by those, and that's why I put it here in the middle of the of the top ten uh, this year. Mm. Come on, the best opening this year, easily. This is the best anime. How do you care about this episode? The opening is so good that I used it makes the anime ten out of ten. Uh, Dragon made of course, into what an amazing anime. Um, honestly, I think it's it's almost my number one, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I almost put it at even higher. Um, the reason why Dragon Man is good is many, many reasons. But first of all, I want to explain this thing here. Right? I struggled with not putting in non neon Biore repeat right in this list because that's a really good anime. Freaking non neon Biore. It's the most wholesome anime ever. There are two reasons why. Okay. It's season three, and I didn't put in Fruit Basket either because uh, as my audience said, nah, it's too many seasons, you're gonna feel it. But honestly, when it comes to Nono and Biaru, they're shorter seasons, so it's less of an impact, right? For the it's like 60 episodes, I feel like there's a lot of build up there, okay? It's a little cheating compared to, like, uh, you know, um, in one season, right? But um, Nono and Biaru, man, I was struggling because, I mean, they had Rengu's uh, reunion scene and they had Rengu and Nishan and so on, right? But, so that's the best Volsam anime ever. However, Dragon Maid. It's almost as good when it comes to this wholesomeness, right? We see Tanna! And so on. You see this stuff happening, right? And you're like, oh my god, it's so good. And, you know, Elma racing the kids up in the woods and all this stuff. Right? It's so good. Uh, but it also has straight up Kyoto animation, you know, Kyoto Strong, right? It has the best animation this year. 
This is the most, best looking anime this year, visual standpoint. And also the best optic for that matter. <laughs> but, I mean, it has the best visual. Like, it's amazing. And the fights are probably straight up the best fights, too. I mean, I would say for choreography aspect, yeah, the, you know. Boogie Woogie is better, right? But from, like, an actual graphic standpoint, choreographic, yeah, they have the best fights. And it's the second most wholesome anime. And that made me kind of... I feel it kind of replaced my love not on, but I still love Nono and Biara, but I was like, you know, no, Dragon Man is better, man, because, again, it has the Nono and Biara wholesomeness, but it has the freaking Yutsu Kaisen action, and then it has this weird rom-com lesbian dragon stuff going on, and also big Oppais, and has the, you know, again, Ida then, same author, right, in the list, right, yeah, it has Oppa jokes and so on, as the S jokes, and I was like, man, this shit is, uh, it has everything, okay? It has everything. It has Illulu with even bigger Oppies. Or Flame Sacks, I guess, right? But, I don't know. Like, Yana speaking, I don't like this one too, but holy shit, this anime is... Just, like, if he's the one that has anime, you're like, this shouldn't be this good. <laughs> you know? You're like, why do they have the best fights in this year? And I, I genuinely mean that. They look the best at least from visual Sakuga standpoint. You're like, yeah. Kyoto animation. <laughs> like, it's, it's just, it's a need to have the good fights, right? So it's just an extra... Extra really massive sprinkle on the on the top right that they have like okay. But then you also have all the all the great scenes, right? And also for that matter, character, goddamn character development, right? With Tor and Elman uh, especially befriending each other. So this season is even better, right? Because they also add actual like character development, backstory and so on. Season one is good, but it does lack this uh, more in-depth character understanding, right? And and why there are enemies and also kinda of lovers and so on. Yeah, so this had everything, right? It had the Yuri, it had the S right, again, it had the big Oppies, the S, those kind of jokes, right? Uh, the hand jokes, it has, it has that stuff. The wolves, it has everything. But well, honestly, it's kind of. Yeah, I mean, but that's why it's kind of similar to Idaten, of course, to earlier, because Idaten, Idaten is super, super edgy, right? And this that is kind of edgy in one way, but then it also mixes in that wholesomeness, but it's even better, because if you think about it, it's even more of a yuxta positioning, right? It's like, over here it's really edgy, s yokes, and it's really weird, and then over here it's like super wholesome, but also kind of weird in a way, with Kana and Sarika was like, Kanya, I like you, and yeah, and it's all this weird shit happening. I guess in the end, I'm gonna define this as kind of like a majority show, right? Where it has uh, this weird edgy yokes, it has, you know, this media, but it also has the wholesomeness, and so on, right? And it's a little bit cute here too, right? So, if it's an anime, that feels like it fulfills, you know, like six, seven genres, right? Something like that, yeah. Maybe it doesn't do anything the best, because I, I would argue that Nomen Biara is better, wholesome, right? For example. But it's like number two in almost everything. So that, that's why I really put it as a, you know, in my absolute top uh, rank it is, yes, because it has everything. And, um, you know, and it is the best looking anime from which type of two words. Okay. Let's talk an odd anime, okay? Odd Taxi. So, I have to say, first I have to give you a little bit of a backstory here, right? With my thing, uh, the watch anime. And that's that. This is the only anime that I binged, okay, on this list. I didn't like binge it only one day, right? I did this on reaction on Twitch, so I did like three episodes per week, so I did like three episodes, which episode, yeah. So I didn't like super binge it and so on. And I did it I, and I did it, I mean just after it ended. So I wasn't like coming in the last winter or whatever. But I think it's fair to say, so I'm thinking about it here, and I well I says it here, right? That I think that I would enjoy it more if I binged it, right? Which I think for most anime, especially this kind of mystery anime like on taxi. And, you know, being there per week, talking to people and so on, right? Because, yeah, I mean, I did react to it, and you could watch some people comment and watch this one, right? But there wasn't that many people, right? Because I was kind of already, I was already over, right? Uh, when I got out, of course, because of comment anyway, and that's always fun and so on, right? But my point, of course, is that if I did it weekly, I think we'd have much more discussions and so on, right? talking to people on Twitter, etc., right? right? Whatever. And that would be more of a meaningful thing. That being said, the major twist, I won't spoil the worry, guys, if you haven't seen it, but the major twist would probably be. Uh, I mean, I guess that twist anyway, right? But I think a lot of people guess that twist if you looked at different uh, social media. So they, I wouldn't be spoiled, but I mean, I think people kind of concluded that <laughs> twist together. But uh, that's one thing I want to say. Second thing is that I have to say here that I'm putting this very high on the list. It's not my upper echelon here. It's not my top echelon kind of thing. My top three or whatever. Like the really super awesome animes, I feel. It's really reached that point. But... Uh, I, I really have to say this thing, and it's kind of a weird thing, like why I put it in here and listen, um, that I feel that I probably, for example, enjoyed Idaten more, right? Uh, honestly, Idaten is like a super, <laughs> yeah. But I have to always be objective, right? That's my whole thing. I'm an honest reviewer, I'm objective. And, uh, you know, Idaten takes a lot of risks too, and it's kind of like batshit crazy, right? 
But this anime is definitely better. It takes risks too, but it takes risks without being batshit crazy. It's crazy in other ways. Right? And I have to respect that. I'm talking about, especially in my, in my number one video, I do a long video here about explaining why it's the best anime this year, right? And arguably one of the best animes ever, if not the best anime ever, right? So I'm going to explain it in long detail, right? <laughs> why it's the best shit ever. And um, I kind of want to iterate uh, a little quickly here, but you can look at the number one and I get a little bit detail, right? But I, I, as a person, I have this like, strong respect, right, for creativity and doing something new, right? I talk about a lot more than that in the, in, the, in the number one video, but I feel old tax did a lot of new stuff. Right? Well, maybe not new, like 100% uniquely new, but at least took a lot of chances, right? And I gotta respect that. So I gotta, that to me puts it up higher than some of the other animes, right, in the list, and especially higher than some of them are even in the top 10, of course. Um, but anyway, what is old tax then? Well, it's a very odd anime, right? It's like a, it's almost like, I'm gonna this thing here. I'm gonna assume, right, that I don't wanna spoil too much, like in any top 10 here. And this anime is really, really hard to explain without spoiling anything, right? It is insanely hard. So I think you have to explain a little bit, right, on spoiler notions. Uh, but anyway, it's about a taxi driver. And one thing immediately, and a lot of people told me this too, right, in comments, but you have to watch a taxi, so you love the main character. And I was like, yeah, I kind of do love the main character. One of the big things is that the main character is an old, what is he, Valros, yeah, <laughs> an old Valros uh, taxi driver. Ever was an animal, right? It's a furry anime. Beastars didn't make it. I can explain it short later, but yeah. Uh, and he drives this taxi, right? And it's kind of like, oh, it's when I work and you know, get paid. He doesn't really have any ambition in life, right? And he just kind of drives around. People make some money. Uh, and he gets into this trouble, right? Accidentally. We'll talk about it sooner. But the uh, first thing is the main character is a really cool main character. Like Again, he's like a really intelligent main character. And what, what I mean with that is that one thing I feel is a huge lack, right? And I thought about it all the time, especially my villain top list and so on, right? Is that most characters are so stupid? I mean, I was saying that people in the, in reality is that intelligent, not everyone at least, but uh, like, p characters are usually way too stupid, right? Especially the bad guys. And what I mean with that is that if you have the power, right, to be, let's say, Lex Luthor, for example, Lex Luthor, he's like a genius, you know, in everything, an inventor, and blah, blah, and so on, but yet he has absolutely zero strategy. Right? Like, that's, that's not making any sense, but of course, because otherwise the hero would never win, right? So the, the bad guys, they usually have like 10, in, 10 out of 10 intelligence, right? 10 out of 10, and it's like tactical skills or whatever. That's what, that's what the memo says, right? But they actually are just terrible when it comes to these basic strategy, right? And any basic like Bronze League soccer player is a better, you know, genius strategist, right? That the basic super genius bad guy in any, both anime and, uh, <laughs> and comics and so on. Not of course everyone, of course I'm generalizing here, but I feel that it's a huge issue that not only bad guys, of course good guys too, but especially bad guys are so incredibly incompetent when it comes to use like basic strategy, right? Like just, maybe just kill the good guy, you know what I mean? Like I'm I'm, 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 I'm gonna spoil you guys here, but I'm writing, you know, more on Instagram. I'm just gonna kill off the catch. <laughs> I'm gonna kill them all. No, but I'm, I'm admitting it, I'm gonna have cats if we can get killed, okay? It's gonna be empty one piece, right? Hey, cats are gonna like, goddamn die. And also it's gonna be like, no, if they lose the fight, uh, the cat, of course, you can't die every time because you don't, you don't want to. You don't want the hero to win everything, otherwise, right? But certainly, one or you know, some friends might die on the journey, right? Because that's gonna make, make it more meaningful. I'm spoiling it a bit, but I'm just like, come on, because I'm, I hate that shit that the good guys can win all the time and uh, nothing happens, right? But how do they attack the little taxi? Well, the main character is basically just like a random taxi driver. Right? He's actually like a real person. He's actually like. That's not kind of weird. I don't want to do that. Oh, you, you kid trying to strangle me, right? And he, his, his actual, like, a actual intelligence. And and this sounds so weird to say, but I think it's, again, it's a huge issue that the character, especially bad guys, most of the good guys, they have no common sense, right? It's like, oh, here's a guy walking up to me. He has, like, this mask on him, and he has, like, you know, <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I'm just going to ignore it. Yeah, like, you punch him in the face, you know what I mean? Like, they have such a bad awareness and just a general understanding of context that happens around them, right? This anime, what I immediately love this anime is that no, this is the opposite. Right? This main character, he's always a weird man. He's like, that guy's still a criminal. That woman is lying to me. You know, he's actually like an actual person, right? Uh, when it comes to, <laughs> you know, behaving with other people, right? And that's a huge thing in this anime that I feel is sorely lacking in almost every other anime ever, right? I think the other anime doesn't have that. It's something like Kadi or something, right? Akagi or something, yeah. But they actually play like such a lot of your game, you know, one out, he's even, he's even better at, you know, strategy. Right? But those guys are actually, those are animes, right, about actual strategy people, right? That are smart and also using the intelligence to actually 
like be good at strategy. Right? The default cat usually doesn't. Right? But again, I, 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 I want to rant about it, but I put it again, and I really, truly really hate how this, oh, I can build a space, you know, rocket or whatever. I can fly, I can build a teleporter. I can do this shit. But what strategy? Like, what is that? Yeah, like, <laughs> this is so stupid. This anime that is opposite that. He doesn't have the intelligence to do anything, uh, I don't say meaningful, but like, you know, to build something crazy, right? He's supposed to be a normal taxi driver. But that's kind of thing. He actually is like a normal person because he actually doesn't get into issues uh, because he's an idiot, right? He doesn't get into the issues of the actual storyline because he's stupid. And instead, he's trying to. And one thing I really like in this anime is that, uh, not spoil, I don't know about spoil, right? But there's going to be a lot of different bad guys. So you ask me Golden Kamui, one of my absolute favorite animes of all time. Golden Kamui is better, though, easily, in my opinion. But it's similar because there's a lot of factions. We have this guy here, it's crazy. There's other criminals. We have there's many different criminals and so on. Right? So there's many different factions. They're fighting each other. One is a neutral guy, and you know, there's a lot of this different sides, right? Um, but the main character is like, you know what? I'm gonna utilize that, right? Okay, this guy has the enemy over there. This guy's enemy with that guy. What if I can, you know, utilize it and make the fight each other, right? But like, this guy can protect me from that guy and so on. And that's immediately, again, honestly, very similar to Golden Kamui. Not the actual anime itself, but just like the premise of utilizing that they have, they have many different enemies, right? Yeah, okay, so I have five, six enemies. But they are not necessarily on the same team, right? Yeah, I mean, three of them are kind of friends, but the other three are kind of enemies, so I can make them, you know, fight each other, right? Yeah. So it's all about that. And that, that makes anime, I think, I really that kind of, yeah, strategy, right? Interesting. And again, then, it also remind me of something like, for example, Kadi or whatever, right? They're actually trying to trade and trying to uh, manipulate people and so on. So I think that really sells the anime a lot. And that's just talking about the main character, right? And his relationship with his girlfriend, Kaina, and so on. It's interesting, right? Uh, and other stuff that in the anime, the most interesting, and it has to be a spoiler here on that, is that this guy here, he is obsessed with this uh, mobile game, right? And that he lost money and so on. Uh, and that also I feel, what it, but I like the anime, because it takes these chances, right? It takes chances of like, okay, we're going to have a guy obsessed with mobile games. He's going to turn into like a psychopathic, or I guess sociopathic, you know, sociopathic murderer, because the main character ruins his game, right? Like, it's just crazy, but actually it's an unrealistic. Like, it's, it's not common in reality, but there have been examples of, for example, in South Korea, there was someone that killed a guy playing Diablo. He took his item in Diablo 2 or something when he died or whatever, yeah. This is like 10 plus years ago, like some internet coffee in uh, in South Korea, Seoul or something, like 2002 or something. So we have, we have examples of people snapping rather than killing another gamer and so on, right? So that's kind of what he's doing. And I just think this, this, this storyline is really, really interesting, right? Because he's obviously like the bad guy and you kind of dislike him, but also feel really sad for him because he obviously has a lot of issues, right? So again, the old character are very... I guess when we look at this, all the character also uh, has so many dimensions because the other bad guys, well, not all of them, but one of the other main bad guys also has a lot of dimensions. He's, just, he's, a, he's a bad guy, but he's not a pure bad guy, right? He's like, he's just one. And then there's another, well, I guess he's more like a Yakuza leader. Not really a, how do I say it? He's a, he's a bad person, right? To some extent, but he's not in conflict with the main character. Yet another, like a, you know, multi dimensional, multi faceted character, right? Because he's a Yakuza leader. But he's trying to do something good, like kinda, right? Because he's like, well, you know, we run my Yakuza, we do some other stuff on the side and so on. So there's a lot of those kind of characters. It makes it very, very interesting. And also the girlfriend is also interesting because he has some bad side too, right? So every character, and same with his best friend. I'm not gonna spoil here, but like, the, <laughs> I'm not spoil, but same with his best friend, right? Uh, they're all like very grave stuff. Like his best friend is a nice person, but he's also a complete moron. And it also has stupid stuff, right? That is probably illegal as well, what he's doing actually. Uh, and so on, right? So it's like, you know, everyone is kind of like a bad person to some extent, right? But, but of course, my point is that that's what makes Apple so real. Because every person is basically a real person, right? Uh, I, I guess it's kind of like a bad uh, rage, you know, because like, almost everyone in the whole anime is a bad person. To some extent, they did all have done something bad, right? <laughs> in reality, you might have a little better rage, you. But, but still, though, it's, it's an anime where there is no, like, pure, you know, goody two character, right? And uh, almost all the bad guys are also have some good sides, you know. There's some, you know, some some part of them have honor or they, they care about children or whatever. So they have something else going for them too, right? So it's a very very interesting anime. Uh, and then it has a lot of this other weird stuff too, with like the, the comedy duo couple, and it has a really into twists. Of course, the twists are very very good. And who's the murderer, or is there more than one murderer? And then it's like there's one murderer, and then other people that are kind of like. Not really killing someone, but they're kind of part of you know the whole thing and, and this stuff, right? And it ends <laughs> kind of weirdly too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
So there's a lot of stuff going for it. And then it has this huge uh, end twist. But honestly, I found Who the Murderer was, was a better twist than, you know, the actual, so to speak, uh, main character's uh, twist. I found the murder twist was better. But uh, generally speaking, though, a really good anime, right? And has a lot of, yeah, unique stuff going for it. And it's basically well, 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 well written. Uh, the reason I want to put it higher, though, is, for example, even though I like the whole... Um, comedy duo thing, right? And I, I'm into that Japanese kind of comedy scene where you have uh, two person um, and it's, how would I explain it? It's usually called a straight man, right? In English. So you have one person saying like, uh, how's that? Stupid stuff, right? And then the other guy is like, oh, you shouldn't buy five bucks or whatever. Oh, and it slaps him, whatever. Yeah. Kind of like that, right? They have the typical uh, Osaka comedy duo, right? And they're voiced by two famous uh, uh, comedy duo, this is one. Um, this, uh, this couple, right? But uh, I don't know. I find there are some storylines, like this storyline, it didn't really amount to much. Uh, so this is not a, like a major spoiler, but I'm just like some of the storylines, especially that storyline, I felt kind of just ebbed out in nothing. It wasn't really important for the main storyline, where most of the other storylines at least some, somehow entwines right into the main plot, right? With the whole uh, the money and uh, the murderer and so on, right? And the crazy guy and so on, yeah. The other plots kind of in the end, merge together, right? As you respect, right? But I was really, I was disappointed in this, that, especially that comedy duo part, where it's like, okay, so they have this comedy duo, they're gonna go on this scene or whatever, right? And you have this guy being the judge, and then that didn't matter. So I felt they kind of dropped the ball on that storyline, and there was some other storylines I felt they kind of half as concluded, it wasn't really going into it. Um, and that's why I'm, you know, putting it here in this part list here. But so, yeah, because I felt that it's really, really good, but it's not a perfect storyline for me. It, it lacks a little bit of uh, some fine tuning, and probably some episode probably felt a little slow, um, but uh, otherwise amazing anime though. But uh, yeah, that old taxi guys I definitely recommend it. But I think most people also have seen it by now, right? Because it's been it turned into one of these like, almost uh, I don't know viral anime afterwards. Right? Everyone's like, woo yeah. And uh, the reason I didn't watch it immediately, I was I was playing here was because. Sometimes, right, when I watch anime, reaction reviews especially, uh, it depends on the days, right? So if I ever have, like, Fruit Basket or someone else, all the animes at the same time, and I felt like, yeah, you know, all, like, Fruit Basket, that's my, that's my, my best favorite anime, right? So I'm like, uh, gonna pick one of these animes, so that much. I don't have infinite time, unfortunately, so that's the reason why. Um, and, then, and then I missed out the first or second episode, and then I was like, uh, okay, I'm gonna wait until it finishes, right? Um, that was the main reason why, honestly. And I don't want to be that guy who just jumps on the bandwagon after or whatever, I guess. <laughs> no, but I really wasn't. It was more like, I think it's just, listen, I, when I do this kind of anime channel, right? So I do reviews and we talk about anime, also gaming and manga and so on too. Uh, sometimes it feels weird, honestly, to watch an anime that you're not reviewing, right? You know what I mean? You feel it's weird. You're kind of like, I honestly have a hard time sometimes just watching an anime and be like, oh, that's a good episode, right? And, and then not do a video about it. You know what I mean? It's almost like, a, maybe it's addictive, but it just feels kind of weird. It's like, oh, I wasted my time. No, not really, but... So, it's, it's just a few animes that I use, like, I can put them on the side, right? And not talk about them. It feels kind of strange. And this anime, yeah, again, I wanted to react to it, right? I wanted to review it because I kind of looked interesting immediately, but then I didn't have much time. And then afterward, I was like, okay, I want to get one anime this day, you know, for this month of weeks or whatever, right? And then... Yeah, I think it added at the same time as Fruit Basket, I believe. And now I was like, okay, Fruit Basket, that's my, you know, I, I gotta watch Fruit Basket, right? So, <laughs> I don't regret that, though. So, I probably, I honestly enjoyed Fruit Basket more, though. But as I mentioned earlier, Fruit Basket, I felt is, um, for our top 10 list, this season, you know, it's so many episodes, I felt that was the cheating, so I didn't have it in the list. But it's, uh, maybe, the best. Uh, honestly, I, honestly, I wouldn't put Fruit Basket number one, but I probably would have it at maybe, like, uh, roughly four or five or something. Yeah, it would be kind of in the middle there, too, right? Uh, but uh, but anyway, Old Taxi was a really good anime, and of course I'm happy that people kept uh, spamming me and telling me to watch it. <laughs> but I think people, as I mentioned earlier, uh, said last point, Taxi, I think it was interesting is because most people, right, that wrote to me on uh, Discord and so on, and also of course YouTube, etc., uh, telling me to watch Old Taxi, uh, almost everyone was like, you're gonna love the main character. He, he's just a human. The main character is like, it's like you. You're like, this main character is like a fat walrus that's like you. No, but they were like, this main character is exactly what you want in the main character, right? So, and, and uh, yeah, people were right, definitely. I was like, man, this makeup's amazing. Yeah, so I mentioned earlier. Yeah, I was like, that's just kind of funny because there were several people commenting, it's like, the main character. You're going to love the main character. He's just your kind of character. <laughs> like I said earlier, yeah, like he's an actual human being with actual intelligence. I was like, yeah, it's really true. So, 
<laughs> but, 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 but I mean, I just mean it's uh, uh, if you want more people to comment that I, I just think it's, yeah, I, I just find it uh, you know I'm happy right that people are how I say it? You, 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 some people at least <laughs> some of you no but some people you know you, you get kind of what I like you know you you probably seen my reviews earlier see some of my reaction or see some of my main replay game whatever and you can like ah oh, this guy kind of likes that uh, that kind of character so, yeah you kind of get you know the feel right so I think it's kind of fun with people are kind of uh, you know, easily recognize that okay, this anime, this is anime for you, right? And for that matter, the n number one anime, right? Of course, coming sooner in the list, uh, it was the same thing too, right? But people were, when I was doing that, uh, one of these uh, live streams before that, uh, people were like spamming, you're gonna listen to the best anime for you, you're gonna listen to the number one anime. So, <laughs> you're gonna love this anime, but this is perfect anime for you. <laughs> this is the perfect anime though. But anyway, guys, let's go to the next uh, anime. Best mother ever! Healing! Uh, so, it's hard talking about this anime, not spoiling it, right? I try to do my best to not spoil too much. So, this anime here then, out of nowhere, right? Osama Ranking. Um, not to be confused with Osama Game. That's not the worst anime ever. <laughs> Osama Game, I still think literally is the worst anime I've ever seen in my life, right? It is the worst thing ever. Uh, however, also my rank, you know, is one of the best animes I've ever seen. This anime is amazing. I will say one thing here. I feel it's a little iffy that you bring it anyway. It's a little iffy having it now, right? Because it's still like ongoing next year. So it's like halfway through the season. But uh, whatever, let's do it. Uh, this anime is so special. It's so different. Uh, what is about them? It's about a mute and a deaf. He's both, mute and a deaf. <laughs> He's both yeah. Mute and a deaf kid, the prince, Boji, is the son of a giant king, and they all have a lot of kings, right? King's rank, there's a lot of kings there in fighting, there's a lot of ranking. Tournament or kind of, I guess, a little bit. But um, he is very tiny instead. I think it's going to be explained later, so why it happened. Right? But um, it's uh, actually just a super sad anime, uh, but also super wholesome. So it comes back a little bit to what I mentioned with Dragon Maid. Because this episode is even better, where half the episode is like wholesome, okay, best brother, best mom scene, you know, it's like super family oriented, um, that kind of scene. And then the next ten minutes is like a kind of really weird horror hen scene, and you're like, what, what, what is this? How is this the same anime? <laughs> you're like, what is happening? Um, I think it does what, uh, honestly, in my opinion, When They Cry is trying to do, but not accomplishing. Not to say that When They Cry is terrible, right? I haven't watched, you know, When They Cry this year, I don't know, I think it was pretty good. But this anime is a lot better, because it, the one thing this anime does incredibly well, it's this, like, really open to interpretation scenes. Like, you have, like, almost no idea ever what anything means. You're like, why is Satan pointing at him? Why, why is she living in the mirror? Why does she upset? So... The anime has this like an incredible a lot of mystery, right? And everything feels like half truths. But the thing is that in some anime it's annoying, right? Where they are like, oh, maybe I'm evil, maybe I'm not, or whatever, yeah. But in this anime it's much more like it tells you, I guess, kind of the truth, but it does it in like a really weird way, right? So you have to like guess what it means. You're like, I think that means that he's on his side, but I'm not sure <laughs> because it was kind of like that thing. So. That, that's one thing that I love is anime because you can never really guess what is happening. You're always like, I mean, you can guess, I mean, but you can never be sure. You can always be like, mm, yeah, yeah. so yeah. That being said, though, I have managed to, uh, I think, especially after watching a few episodes, you're starting to kind of understand how the author writes a little bit. So you're like, ah, oh, well, this is probably what happened. Yeah. But you're not always sure on it, and uh, it's hard to not, you know, motivate what I'm so good at spoiling it, right? But it's a particular one scene, it's a betrayal scene, and you feel like, oh, this is like a kind of Tower of God, Betrayal Organ, but it's a much better scene in Tower of God, because, well, arguably, because Tower of God is like more of a culmination scene, I suppose, but in this anime, you have the betrayal scene, but immediately the character betraying them, so, my spoiler, is like, regretting doing it, and that's why it's so interesting, because you feel like, wait, he doesn't want to betray him, like, why did he betray him for that, so, the, the, the actual characters, this, uh, say, the writing and the dynamic of the character, is much more interesting, where Tower of God, I don't spoil it either, but they, they, those scenes are very similar, honestly, they're very, very similar. And a lot of people, including Mira, compared those things when they saw it, uh, so very, very similar, honestly. But in Tower of God, it's more like this culmination thing, right? And you kind of like, like the, char the character doing the betrayal, you don't really feel like it, like it matters that much to them. They're just like evil or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, there was evil, it's a good scene, but there is like stone cold evil. Maybe not necessarily, but that's kind of how it feels, right? 
But in in uh, this anime, it's the opposite. You feel real, you feel sorry for the traitor immediately. You're like, oh man, no. you hate you hate the traitor. But at the same time, you're like, I kind of feel sorry for this person because I understand why he's doing it. He's so conflicted doing it. So it's really interesting. That stuff is anime. It's why it's so good. And the other thing it does, which is the big thing, right? For example, mom here, which is the best character in anime, is the healing. Uh, Mama healing, easily the best. And I think the best mom since Wolf Mom. Uh, most interesting, most uh, developed, most like dynamic mother, I think, since many, many years ago. I mean, you're probably better moms out there, right? You have other animes focusing more on mothers or whatever. But, you know, honestly, my opinion, there are some really good moms. So they have Fruit Basket mom, right? Best mom, Gyro mom. She's gonna have Gyro Yankee mom, she's gonna have her own movie this year, right? Like next month, probably. But which I definitely will see, of course, in Jesus Christ, like Fruit Basket, the preload. Kind of thing, right? <laughs> Seeing how mom got babies. Yeah, of course, but uh, it's like, yeah. Um, what, what can I say, right? That, she's one of the rare moms where I feel like this mom is pretty good uh, and actually feels like a real person's worth. I think, honestly, I'm not going to say that she did, oh, there's so many bad or cash in anime, but I think many of them are quite, you know, one dimensional. Let's be honest, they're kind of quite one dimensional. Where, yeah, they love their son or their daughter, right? And they help them out and so on. And they're generally nice moms. But they aren't, like, really special with them. Like, they're not doing... You know, and, and I think it's interesting not to have an evil mom. But it's interesting with a mother that actually has to, you know, make some hard decision, right? You know, and trying to save her son, but also having to fight her husband. But well, yeah, it's more interesting, right? Most anime moms are just kind of, like, one-dimensional. Hey, honey, here's your breakfast. Yeah, you know, see you next episode. Yeah, they're... many of them are more like that. Or, I would argue that they're kind of like cray-cray. Yeah, they're like... Uh, Whatever, kill a kid or something. Yeah, <laughs> they're like super sociopathic murder moms. Yeah, it feels like most animes has nothing in between, right? Either the mom is like this kind of you know vanilla house house mother, you know, stay at home mom, and she's nice, or she's trying to you know murder her own kid and take over the planet or something, right? Uh, and this anime kind of does both. That's why it's so interesting. I'm trying not to spoil it, right? But this anime does both. Trust me, this anime is amazing because. Now, these parents, this anime, they do both. They're both evil and good and everything, right? Again, it's a great zone anime. Right? You're like, whoa. Um, and the anime is so well written that in the beginning, you think that, oh, she's so evil, or she's gonna kill him or whatever. Then, what? She's gonna save him and then turn around again. And then, yeah, it's back and forth to twist. So, because it's so hard to interpret what the characters are doing, right? So, you're always like wondering who's the traitor, who's gonna do these things and so on. It's really, really an amazing story, right? because especially in this, again, subversion that you. You, like, again, the traitor isn't actually evil, arguably, right? <laughs> Even though it betrayed him, but isn't actually evil. Um, the mom isn't actually evil, or maybe so on, right? Yeah, it's kind of like, interesting. You, you really, but on the same time, maybe a good character isn't actually good, right? <laughs> you just point out, yeah. It's, it, it would be kind of boring if it only was one way, right? <laughs> if everyone was actually just evil or good or whatever. No, no, it's, it's, it's both ways. And also, obviously, combining that and so on, right? Uh, so that's really interesting. And then, you know, it has this interesting thing, similar to happened to Silent Voice, uh, which of course I read the whole manga, right, and uh, so on, and uh, we always talked about Fumetsu no Anata earlier, right? And Silent Voice is much better than Fumetsu no Anata, I mean, it's much, much better than Fumetsu no Anata. It's the best anime movie ever, even though the manga is better, but still, uh, it's similar to that anime, right? You have this, like, deaf main character, his sign language, and so on, and that builds up, especially some of the wholesome scenes, right? Like, um, character trying to learn something and so on, but also builds up, obviously, a lot of bullying and, and stuff, right? So it's a really diverse anime. But it also has this, um, which I haven't talked about so much here, but it has this, like, horror team going on, it has this scary shit happening and so on, right? And uh, I'll, I'll explain too much here, because I don't have to basically spoil it, right? Because there's so much weird stuff happening with, like, Phoenix ass and smoothies and so on. It's hard to explain it. I would say one thing, though, which I have to say, and I think it's fair to say that, even though it is a spoiler now, there's a warning... Uh, but I feel it's fair as a critique on the anime, so that's why I feel I have to say it. And that is, the anime is somewhat similar to Attack on Titan, on the whole um, Daida storyline. Um, and the reason I say that is just because, oh, it doesn't feel innovative or whatever, even though I have to say it feels very similar. Um, but the issue for me, and I don't know if it's on purpose or whatever, but this is true, is that Daida is voiced by Yuki Kaya, which is also doing Eren, of course, coming this week here. Attack on Titan. So it's kind of weird, honestly, in my opinion, and I said it several times in the reviews, that... Yeah, this storyline about this specific character, it is very similar to Tekken Titan with Eren. Uh, it has a lot of similarities to like the premise, base, backstory of Eren to some extent. And then it has the same voice actor. I mean, I'm not joking, it's the same voice actor, very similar storyline, right? With a specific character. So you're like, oh, okay, they, 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 like, we need an Eren. Yeah, it really feels like the anime company was like, 
Okay, this storyline is kind of Aaron, but it's, you know what? Can we get the Aaron guy to do the Aaron voice? You know, it feels, it almost feels like that's what I'm saying. I don't want to spoil too much, but it's like, he's a great voice actor. Of course, he does many, many characters, right? He's done many, many, many enemies. He's a great voice actor. Um, but he also did Beastar as well, right? <laughs> but I'm also, uh, and for that matter, let's talk about Beastar quickly then. Um, when we are at <laughs> this voice actor, right? uh, I mentioned it earlier, a little text over. We didn't have Beastar in uh, this top 10, which is a 2. Um, I don't know. I think Beastar is good, right? I actually read, read the Red Manga after I finished the anime, so, you know, I don't like Beastar, don't get me wrong. But I do find Season 2 weaker than Season 1 in a lot of ways. I think there's a lot of episodes that are kind of, like, nothing burgers, where you feel you kind of can skip them. The Urushimaru, uh, could, <laughs> yeah, uh, Urushimaru's voice actor, she's, she's in the anime. Or his name again, Kudira, something like that. Um, sorry if I butchered her name there. Uh, but yeah, she's doing this Snake Lady. And for example, so just minor spoiler for business, right? That doesn't amount to anything. Like, they introduced this new, you know, badass character, right? Uh, and obviously voiced by like, a f- classic voice actor and doing a snake. So again, it's kind of like, you know, voicing the Aaron character, voicing the snake character. Yeah, very typecast, right? Oh, she's the snake lady, so let's do her on a snake, right? Ba- basically. And then she has like a couple of episodes and then she just doesn't do anything. Like, stuff like that happens in the thing. Some of the biggest story. And he kind of levels up to stuff and so on. Um, it's later better explained in the manga why he gets stronger so on because he's not actually a wolf or whatever. <laughs> Something like that. I don't want to explain much to here. But it, it is a weird thing. It, it almost immediately comes up in, in season 3, I guess. That's, I haven't read the whole manga. I just read it a little bit afterwards. But um, that's one of the reasons why I didn't have Beast, all right? Or Tax is better, definitely. But I think that just... Like, it's... How's it? B Star is similar to this anime because it also has a lot of like interpretation scenes, right? But then it doesn't pay them off, right? And it clearly finishes off the storyline. With this anime, is that they have interpretation scenes and either they haven't been explained yet, so maybe they're gonna fail. I mean, that's why I mentioned earlier. I will say that they maybe they're gonna fail, right? I don't think so, but they might fail. That's the true, uh, that's the true, uh, how I say it, uh, issue that might happen, right? The next, next, next season might fail, right? But let me assume it doesn't. Uh, this anime. I think concludes all his interpretation scenes, right? He kind of explains them, even though it sometimes does even more confusing stuff, right? But you kind of figure it out, it's very interesting. Where in Beastar, I also think they're all similar, and they kind of have this similar, oh, why can they do this thing or whatever, it's a wolf or whatever, yeah. But then, then they explain it, or they don't explain it whatsoever. It either explains it, and some stuff I find out kind of weak, uh, or it doesn't explain it, and it's like, whatever, they just kind of drop it, yeah. And I, uh, that's for example, you know, I think a big issue in a lot of animes, right? Where they have this twist and turns, and they don't, uh, yeah, they just drop all the plot threads, right? A lot of anime does this. We're gonna see, of course, they can talk to Comedy C if they manage to uh, explain on plot points, right? I don't talk too much about Tekken Titan here, but I will say that I really hope, of course, they're gonna, uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I, I'll be bonus here. I hope they're either gonna do a much better ending, right, in the anime, actually explaining, just talking about these plot points that aren't explained, actually exploring some of these uh, threads and so on, right? Or I'm hoping, honestly, that they're gonna fail even more, right? That they're gonna be a miserably shit show. So that would be hilarious. So uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully it's either amazingly good or amazingly bad. It would be really boring if it's mid, right? That's, that's boring. I, I want it to either fail or succeed, right? I don't want it to be like, uh, okay. But this anime then is that I genuinely think it's gonna be much better than Attack on Titan coming this season. Because so far it's uh, much better writing for the first episodes. Um, and just the general thing that it's like hard to explain it because it does basically a twist almost every episode, but you don't feel the twist is bad. You know, you, you, it's happened, the anime really has twists all the time, especially with Mom here. She's the most twisted character, uh, and yet you feel like it just makes sense. You know, you, you see the little backstory, and I, I buy it. Yeah, and you you have it's, it's a good twist, and honestly, in a little way, it reminds me of Bleach. Right, you don't have Bleach up here yeah, behind me, right? And Ble- Bleach is famous for all its power twist, right? Uh, and sometimes Bleach is really fun. So that it, it, but I, I argue for it, that Bleach gets graining after a while. I mean, I love Bleach in the beginning, and then it gets a little bit like, okay, but now we've done like 20 power tricks. Now it's getting a little bit silly, you know? <laughs> they bring another one, the same chapter, yeah. It's getting a little silly. This anime honestly feels a little bit of that, so I will say that what I think is like a 10 out of 10 show, I really do, and it's, it's a really amazing show, I recommend it. Uh, I have to say that if it keeps doing like a twist every episode, yeah, maybe it's gonna fail, right? Because it's like, holy shit, there's so many twists. There's always like some really weird uh, tweaky twist every time. But somehow it just, it just works because the issue is that I think, you know, with Bleach, there's a, there's a power twist. Oh, I actually, I have a, my katana is like two or whatever. I can summon a dragon, whatever, yeah, it's, it's random shit, right? This anime is like, 
actually I was paying them and it's like it's this little tiny like, story twist at all the time and and it just kind of works so far it hasn't failed a single time and uh, the more you learn about the character you know, you know the more in depth the feel and so on the only real critique I have for this anime uh, as I said by saying and I said it to quite people dislike my first video of it is that I found episode one to be pretty weak yeah like really weak honestly compared with the rest of the anime episode two is like 11 out of 10 like a really massive episode because Kage's backstory is sad it's really really sad backstory and that should have probably been the first episode uh, even though i understand it'd be kind of weird from a maybe nerd standpoint but i don't know maybe she, i don't know but it's episode one is like the only episode i feel isn't that good honestly like it's just kind of like it's not terrible but you but episode one it feels like you don't understand what's happening in the sense that not that it's hard to understand it but it's more like i understand the genre like what are we doing this guy is running around he's deaf and mute he's being bullied i mean of course he builds up his he's bullied and so friends or whatever right? but it's like it feels like a really weird episode for 20 minutes and uh, i think the pacing is actually the issue of, of the first episode because they could have had the same storyline in maybe 10 minutes and then they could have started the cargo backstory in the last 10 minutes i, I definitely feel the first episode is very slow paced uh because it doesn't display much at all or show you much you should show you that he's bullied right he's a deaf guy so he's bullied it's death and mute, so they bully him. That's basically it, right? And introduces the character's names, basically. But there's really no progress more on there. And kind of, the episode, in my opinion, kind of gets off in the last, like, four or five minutes. That's when the episode really starts, right? Um, so I, I would easily argue for that you could cut away, like, even ten minutes of episode one. The first five minutes could have been the same, you know, the introductions one, and then you could have started uh, the fight, and then the target backstory and so on. You probably honestly could have had a tighter pacing and have both Kage's backstory and episode one in the same episode. Episode one and two could be the same episode. That is a little too extreme, though. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really argue for that. But that is possible to do. It'd probably be too high pacing. But I, I think you could leave a little bit of the end of that for next episode if you kind of tighten the bit, right? So that that'll be my only critique. A lot of people kind of was angry at my first review. I was like, oh, this anime is the best thing ever. So hating on it. But I really do think the episode one was um, kind of lackluster. Until the last minutes there, yeah, and then episode two is like freaking god piece. But the last thing I say about that though is that I also find it faulted, right? Because I know a lot of people, uh, and maybe you're one of them, right? Watch this video here. I mean, a lot of people they watch episode one, and I always, not always, but almost always, I watch you know not three episodes. Really. I don't care about that shit. But I watch more than one episode usually, right? Very very rarely do I drop an anime episode one. One anime I dropped the last season was this Deep Insanity. The episode was just incredibly crap. So then I dropped it, right? This is just bad. There is no redeeming quality here. Right? This anime, I was like, this is not bad, but it's kind of like, uh, if it's kind of, yeah, I don't know what it's doing. You know what I mean? It's kind of uh, strange. Okay, I guess I watch more and see see where it goes, right? So of course I didn't drop it, and I would never drop this kind of anime uh, because again, the episode one isn't bad, but it's not. I think it's fair to say that it isn't like really good either. It's like uh, it's just kind of all over the place in, in some opinion. But I think mostly it's, it's the pacing, right? Um, but anyway, of course, my point is that, just to emphasize that point here, uh, that I'm pretty sure a lot of people unfortunately dropped this anime, right? You know what I mean? A lot of people probably were like, ah, this anime is this weird, this like, that comedy is bad, or whatever, I'm just gonna... I think, unfortunately, uh, a lot of people didn't even see episode 2, right? But it's pretty common that people drop the anime pretty quickly, right? Um, and you see the same thing with other animes too, right? I mentioned earlier, the internet, right? People dropping that because they're like, oh no, this is too much edgy. Or because much tension, oh yeah, this character is a... Is a pearl. Oh, I'm dropping it. You know, and they drop it for difficult reason, right? And they don't give it a chance, right? Uh, as I explained in my potential video, that you know, it's all about being open-minded and so on. I'm very open-minded, so I, I honestly I feel I very rarely drop enemies, right? You know what I mean? Uh, and even because if they're really bad, as you know, with me, I keep watching them because then I'm like, if it's really bad, then I'm interested in watching them because I'm like, how can it be this bad? But if it's really, really like mid boring, right? Like. The percent if you say, oh, this is bad, but it's just mostly boring, you know, now it's like, whatever, then it's like, it's not even fun to analyze, it's just boring, right? But anyway, this anime is like a freaking masterpiece, and unfortunately, I think a lot of people aren't watching it. And one other thing with the anime, though, is that it's very Disney-like-ish, but not really, but it kind of, how would you say it, right? At like a visual value, as a surface value, whatever you call it, like the first surface impression of the anime, you would think it is like a Disney show or something. Not really, but kind of, because it's like this medieval uh, king and queen, right? You see the crown here. She's just like a typical evil stepmom, right? And she's the evil stepmom, of course, shielding, so... She, I mean, that's, the thing, that's, but that's on purpose, though, honestly, right? Like this, she looks like the evil stepmom, because she is the evil stepmom, right? That's the whole point, right? So, um, the anime, of course, 
is utilizing these Disney tropes or whatever to be called fairy tale tropes as its advantage, right? That's how it writes the characters to kind of quickly introduce the characters and so on, right? And sometimes, of course, subvert the trope, but you know, that's kind of what, what it does, right? But I think that that honestly is a little bit with anime because I can definitely imagine people being like, oh, this is some kind of like Disney anime, it's probably for children, it looks very kind of, just kind of, you know, Kawaii, Kodomo. Whatever, right? But the anime is like a horror anime. <laughs> Half the anime is some kind of really weird, like, existentialism horror anime. You're like, what's happening? You're eating these people, and it's like some kind of uh, crazy anime. Some parts are really, really horror. This anime is like 18 plus, guys. It is not for... Um, no, no, no. This anime has some really sick storylines. Uh, as I mentioned, it is Attack on Titan, Berserk, uh, to some of the points. Right? It's very, very sane. Like, that's, but that's, I guess the anime it really reminds me of. I suppose. Not, I don't think it's very similar, but I guess from like a visual standpoint, it's of course made in the abyss. Right? It looks like this kawaii little anime, Kodomo anime. It's actually a kind of seinen horror <laughs> eating human kind of anime, right? You know what I mean? That's the actual anime. Yeah, it looks all kawaii, and then you're like, oh, they're eating humans. Okay, yeah, okay, screw it. <laughs> like, oh, it's Soylent Green? Oh, god damn it. You know, it's like, oh, shit. So, uh, but that's interesting too with the anime. But, but uh, yeah. The anime does use it though very very good, right? Because it is it using those tropes that so you look at it, you think that oh yeah, like she's evil stepmom, you know, evil witch knows and this thing. She's obviously evil and she's mean to him, you know. And you're like yeah yeah, so you can understand. So you can you know, it's like a I guess if you look at it, I think I think it's interesting with the anime. My last point with anime is that if you go and read the Grimm's right, the Grimm brother uh, Grimm, the brother Grimm storyline, so then this other you know old fairy tales. The old ones from the 19th century and so on, and of course older, but the Grimm's are in that century, right? Um, they are much, much more brutal uh, than the separate Disney version, right? So, this anime feels, I guess, in one way, you look at it as this is like how those fairy tales actually used to be, right? Oh, you know, yeah, 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 but then the wolf actually ate the, the daughter and, you know, from the Pansuin upwards kind of thing, and she split her in half from whatever, yeah, like it, it, that's actually how they go, right? They're, they're much, much, much more brutal. And kind of crazy, right? Man of these old uh, uh, folk tales and fairy tales and so on, right? And this is kind of how this anime feels. It's like it's an anime about the actual kind of old school fairy tale, not the Disney version of it, like the pre Disney version. Uh, that much more inclined to what it actually is, is you know, uh, it homaging to, I guess, or parodying or whatever, right? And it's like, no, no, this is like old school fairy tale, not, not, the, not the Disney version, the pre, 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 pre Disney version. Um, for example, they have it in Japanese culture too, right? They have the tanuki, uh, the shopper, yeah, the tanuki in uh, in Japanese folklore, the trickster raccoon, right? Uh, like those stories are crazy. I mean, most yokai's are killing people, right, in, in Japanese folklore, but the uh, tanuki is like a freaking Eric Cartman character. He's like he, he makes people eat each other's stuff. He makes like some white eater husband or white version or something. Like seriously, the tanuki has huge gigantic balls, right? So can weird stuff. Mad, yeah, medical, you know, drummer, <laughs> drummer, steel uh, <laughs> balls, and then it like makes tricks people to like yeah consume their children or something and it, it's crazy like if you read those uh, old school tanuki storyline like seriously if you see south park you're not talking about yeah like tanuki is like eric cartman of the japanese folklore <laughs> like it's super evil and they're petty and they're mean and so on right uh but the tanuki is really really evil but uh like you know yeah european of course it's based on european folklore right they have similar you know magical shit right uh, that are kind of similar but i think that honestly the tanuki is might be the worst they want to straight that the one of the worst fairy tale creatures it's really really evil like i i don't think i read anyone more evil than the <laughs> japanese tanuki there probably is something else that is like worse it eats people and so on but the thing is that japanese folklore usually has a trick to it right that's a weird thing yeah um, European folklore is a little more like, oh, don't go to the river, then Necken pulls you down the Swedish uh, kappa, he pulls you down into the water, so you drown, right? So mo most folklore comes from, I said this because the men of the videos too, right? Because it's a very typical cultural uh, interpretation, right? Like I, I work with, or, you know, I read it is for my, for, my, for my degree, but it's pretty obvious. Like, uh, most of this stuff comes from, like, how do I say it? Uh, this Disney kind of fairy tale ideas, right? Or actually based on. How do I teach children and also other people, but not the children, to not do dumb stuff, right? So you have to be necking them. That's a Swedish like cap or a Swedish kelpie. Kelpie is Irish, right? And they pull you down into the water. So you teach the children that oh, necking, he's like doing his music, and then he pulls you down, right? Pipe, pipe into the water. So you have to avoid him, right? Because he's gonna. So, so it, the point is to like, don't go, you know, to the river. Right? So the neck will come and kill you. So you're teaching children to, you know, be afraid. So, so a lot of this like folklore 
isn't it necessarily people actually believe in them, right? But it's like you want the children to believe in them, so they're gonna be afraid of doing dumb stuff, right? Um, and that's very, very common. And that's why you can find, uh, for example, then the Kappa, Nick and Kelpie and so on in different countries, because it's like they're basically fulfilling the exact same fairy tale, right? From like a premise standpoint. They look different and so on, but they have the same powers basically, because of course they're all about scaring children to not go to the water. So they're like the same thing, right? Uh, and then, for example, Yoki Ona, right? This beautiful ice woman, Japanese folklore. She's supposed to make you afraid, right, of going into the snow, right? Like, don't go into the, the haze, right? Because you're gonna have this, like, hailing haze thing, uh, this misty haze, right? And that makes you see uh, illusions, right? Uh, perhaps, right? Uh, or, you know, you can be really hot, right? So it's a mirage, but you get some kind of mirage by really, really, but different cold weather, too, sometimes. And the point, then, of course, is that, oh, if you see some kind of figure, right? oh, it's like a woman or something, now it's just an evil yokai, right? So don't go to it because it's like, it will kill you, right? So that it's teach people to. Yeah, be afraid of going to hag the big guy, Swedish. <laughs> but uh, so you have kind of the same thing in Swedish too, and so on. Uh, but that's why it's kind of funny that Yoki Wanna is like this, like a really beautiful babe, right? They're like, oh, don't go to the ice match, she's gonna kill you. Yeah, she can take your life and it's like soccer boss, you know, she's gonna suck your uh, your heat, right? Yeah, <laughs> with your oppa, so, yeah, gonna eat hopper and she kills you, right? Uh, kind of like that. But it's a lot of funny hen stuff we can find them when they're doing like some you know, spoof on that, you know? Like someone sees like a woman in the onsen, right? She's like a huge oppa and Things she's like Yoki Wanna and then gets close to her. Like, oh, you know, come here and smash me. <laughs> you need to get that body heat up. <laughs> I definitely seen those those head mangas where it's like I seen it more than once. No, yeah, yeah. I definitely seen people because it's kind of funny. Right? And honestly, I don't, I don't really be like, oh yeah, head stuff. I don't, those stuff I actually look at because, again, from like my work standpoint, it's like kind of weird. But just because you know, I study to some extent, right? You know, human culture. Right? So I'm like, okay, this is clearly like a spoof on the evil folklore. It, it, I, I find it very interesting. Uh, but anyway, this anime is what I'm talking about here, right? It's a lot of like folklore stuff, uh, of course, mostly European, and they're all the most appealing, right? They're griffins, they're you know, hydras, and you know, they're, they're all, of, I'm not spoil too much here, but you know, there's this bunch of different folklore and fable monsters and this stuff appearing, right? Uh, and, uh, but they all have this weird, maybe I should say weird, but you didn't, but you didn't know what to expect, right? This was anime interesting because, yeah, he has like an evil uh, god, or is he even? Or he's a good guy, though. Is she actually good? It's kind of like that feeling to it, right? You watch the anime, you're like, huh. <laughs> yeah, you never trust the anime one. If this anime makes you paranoid. You're like, I don't know, man. This guy, this guy, like this uh, underground king, he looks kind of nice, actually. Around the prince, I mean, he looks kind of nice, but he might just be pretending to be nice. So probably not backstab. Yeah, like, <laughs> it makes you kind of paranoid because everyone is like, no one is what you think they're going to be, right? Uh, but I will say that thing, as I mentioned earlier, though. Uh, honestly, right? I really love this anime, but I do feel it's a little weaker now than it was in the beginning, as I mentioned earlier, because, of course, you do get a little used to it. Right? You do get a little used to the author's uh, way that the author presents the storyline. So you, so you get you get that little wise rapper. You're like, well, okay, last time he did that thing, that meant that thing. So uh, it doesn't always you know pan out like that, but, I, but but it is true that the anime gets more predictable the more, of course, you understand how the author thinks, right? Which is pretty common, I think, for most animes, but it might be the most... This might be one of the more noticeable animes, right? Uh, but that being said, though, I find the worst case of that, let's talk about a lot of videos, right? It's One Piece, right? Because One Piece, and that is not, it's not a surprise, but you've been reading One Piece for, you know, me 20 years, right? You, 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 and people are like, you don't know what Uda thinks. I'm like, I kind of feel I do, honestly. I mean, I don't know exactly what it thinks, but I think a lot of people, after 20 years of One Piece, I think we are kind of in this hell, right? To some extent. I think it's very fair to say that, no, no, if you are reading 1,000 plus chapters, I do understand how he usually writes. There's like, you know, some you read some theories of One Piece, you're like, that's never gonna happen. But you know, it might happen. It's like, no, Uda is never gonna. Do. You know what Uda's gonna do? It's like, I kind of know he's not gonna do that. It's like, you, you know, you, you kind of have like a, you don't know exactly what it's gonna do. But 20 years ago, you might have a this guess, this random station, right? And then it, this, and now it's probably something here, right? You, you don't know exactly where it's gonna be in this interval, but it certainly is a tinier interval. Than when it was like, 20 years ago, because you, you obviously have seen what he doesn't do, right? Like, so they kill any, like, every, they kill any characters, right? <laughs> you clearly have, like, you know, slimmed it down the, the possibilities, right? And that's very true. And this anime makes the same thing, right? So, it, but, like, it's this anime, it starts like this, right? It's super hard to interpret it, right? You start at maximum interpretation, and then it goes pretty quickly, maybe, to that, right? But it still has a lot of, like, you know, possibilities, right? With your currently, but I definitely feel like it's probably. It quite quickly definitely gonna sum in some bits, right? Because you can uh, you, you kinda grasp how it's writing, right? So I guess the first twenty to thirty percent goes in pretty quickly. Um and that's not a real critique for the anime though, but I guess I'm just I'm just too intelligent. No, but I feel it's uh, it's fair to say that I still this is still 
one of my most hyped animes, right? For next season, it really is. Uh, after basically Idol, <laughs> no, no, but my favorite show is the My Dress Up Girl, right? My Dress Up uh, Idol, or My Dress Up Cosplay Girl, or whatever it's called in English now again. My Dress Up Doll, it's called, yeah. My Dress Up Doll, it is, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, it's like number two basically. Because I read the manga of My Dress Up Doll, and it's like amazing. <laughs> it's the ultimate best girl, come on. That's my love interest, come on. I'm gonna marry her one day. Uh, anyway, guys, that's. King's Game, give it a chance. Now let's talk about the next anime in the top 10 list. 2. Add Zero, Season 2, Part 2. 2, 2, 2. It's perfect. That's my number 2. It actually, it actually is number 2 because it's too little rem, right? Yeah. Too little rem, that's why. Otherwise it would be number 1. Right? But, uh, I'm going to be here talking about the Zero, of course. Uh, the reason why I think most people know, right? Because they've been very, very hammered on people. Showing or even having you know as here in the thumbnail or whatever so this will be talking about. and I want to say it here There's a side note whatever right? uh, Obviously, I'm just lazy and so on. No, I mean to some, to some extent I am lazy or whatever right? I do effectively But it is true that I could make this video right with a lot more you know, clips and that stuff and so on right? But when you do that you you risk obviously losing the video having it blocked or so on right? So one reason for example is like last time I did a top 10 like this uh, I did only clips, right? But then it took me like two, three work days to, to get it up, right? Because it kept getting, you know, blocked. Uh, yeah, yeah, so so, uh, so honestly, uh, this year I feel I'm not gonna show anything. That's a lot of Metal Zero and like Vivian and so on, those animes or Shadow House or anything are completely off uh, limits, right? Because then you get the very, very common to get hammer on. Um, and also then because it's honestly, it's, it feels, uh, it's so much hassle getting block you have to do this stuff and so on it takes so much time right or my favorite is say like for example you upload a video with like a or something you upload it it goes like one day and then it's like it's you have to re and uh, it, it's so annoying so anyway here we are we're talking about this here but i hope people understand of course the previous anime i thought about too right that i'm not showing you like you know here's like a five minute clip of that it's a few minutes of that yeah because you know it's just um it's just so much extra work and risk i think it's more about the risk than anything, honestly in my opinion so i'll see it again it's of limits and unfortunately i have to say before you review or talk about the anime <laughs> review it but talking about the studio right is that yeah it's important right? obviously i did react to all the episodes and reviewed them and so on but then i uh, i yeah i removed all the videos right because uh, it was like 50 60 people getting their videos uh, taken down right which is crazy yeah but like crazy i've never seen something similar before uh, yeah. i've seen the course with other companies doing similar stuff as one right and um but not not in that level not in that level certainly i've seen people getting more videos you know uh, removed or whatever right like in, in in total numbers but when it comes to this anime unfortunately and i have to say it again and explain it right that it was like so many people like one one video there two videos there one video there right? yeah it was like, drrr, like everyone right so um yeah and a lot of people lost their channel so on right? that's why of course i uh, yeah Remove my videos then uh, as a precaution, right? But anyway, here we still are I'm talking about the zero. But, uh, but again, let's just point out it is unfortunate to really be in this video here, but I want to say it, right? Because yeah, this is one of the best animes, not just this year, but one of the best animes of all time, right? Freaking El Zero. It's like one of the greatest animes ever made, right? And it, it feels very unfortunate that it's basically like removed on YouTube. It's very, very unfortunate. Yeah, like if you. It feels kind of silly. And of course, people can say, oh, but I can find this guy's reaction up. Yeah, sure, but. Not even taking on a massive risk, right? Massive risk. But there's so many people that had their videos uh, with their zero. So I, I don't feel it's worth it, right? Even though I would love if people could go look at my videos and so on at uh, El zero and uh, my opening reviews and so on, right? or etc. But anyway, what is El zero? I'll, I'll say one thing first about El zero, I guess. It does feel a little bit almost cheating because I didn't put in Fruit Basket in this top 10 and I, I was very close to doing that, but I've had top 10 Fruit Basket, it's actually three sixty plus episodes, whatever it is. Yeah, I felt like that's too much, right? I didn't put in like my academia or whatever, right? Uh, back here, as I mentioned earlier, I don't put that in because I feel they have too much you know, build up, right? Before they and comparing them to like new anime and so on. And if you just have me here, I have to say it, it definitely fits on the borderline, right? You know, it has a lot of episodes. It's like part two, season two. It definitely there's a lot more episodes of it than most animes uh, in this list, right? There are like one season. So th that I have to say, you know, it has a little bit of like a buffering here, right? But uh, but, but but otherwise, yeah, it is a culmination, right? I've seen it before. And it actually really ends. Uh, it's hard not. I have a spoiler, of course, but FCA is about a guy, right? It's a kind. 
Så kan man se det skulle göra en media. He got time traveling power, so he dies and goes back in time. Right? It's brand new day. And um, this last part then we had this season or this year, I mean, uh, is of course this massive, yeah, again, culmination of many, many, many storylines that we have followed right in the previous season in the part one, right? So. Is coming together this monster over there, this storyline, what is Beatrice, what is Roosevelt, and so on. What is this weird woman, this weird witch, and so on. And we get to see all the different witches, and we get Emilia's flashback. So, th this was really was this is the, I mean, it is the best part of this year, right? Because you finally have a lot of these conclusions. And I think if you press something at Second Titan, it is similar, right? We are, I'm not supposed to Titan, don't worry. But I will say that then you kind of get to the basement, right? But I, without saying, don't worry, no spoilers. Without saying whatever happening or afterwards or whatever it means, or whatever. Right? Um, but you kind of get a point, right? If you take a tight, it's kind of like get, getting back home. What do we actually learn when we get back to the door, kind of thing, right? That's kind of how this season of uh, Zero felt. But for like you know the whole season, not just one two episodes. Take a tight, and it's like you know you get kind of like the twist or whatever. Here it's like twist, 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 twist. Here it's like the Kidna twist, and then it's Russo twist, and the twist. Yeah, this is, has been like. Almost a twist every episode, right? And one thing for that matter that, it, that I almost forgot about when I see is that the episodes are so long too. The episodes are like no ending, no opening usually, and they are more meanings anyway. So the, the episodes are sometimes like 25, 26 minute episodes, and again, they don't have the opening and ending. So a normal anime, right, is opening and ending, uh, and it's a 22, 23 minute episode in 23 minutes. So you can remove roughly 3 minutes, right, and have something like 20 minutes for actual content. Typical anime episode. Uh, One Piece has double opening, right? And it has like no ending, but it's roughly the same amount of actual episode. Of course, I've had a lot of flashbacks, but <laughs> but if you ignore that, you know what I mean. Yeah, a lot of recap, but no, normally it's like twenty minutes per episode, right? But then zero then went for like twenty five. Sometimes I think they even had like twenty seven minute episodes, uh, and they skipped them opening and ending. So it's like plainly just twenty five minute episodes. So that alone is kind of critical like about it because yeah, this season we had this year then was like at least one more, I mean, it's like two more episodes, right? Yeah, it's like five minutes, roughly speaking, I think, average or so, five minutes per episode, for some more. So you have five plus 12, uh, five times 12, I mean, uh, 60 more minutes, right? So it's like three more episodes, uh, but at least two more episodes, because it's kind of uneven. That being said, though, uh, I have to say, as a critique, though, even though I love it, doing this stuff, it's a little strange that they're kind of doing it on off, right? Yeah. One episode is at 27, one at 23. Yeah, it's kind of weird that they can't really decide how much time one episode should have. It does, it feels kind of like they extend the plot if they feel the need to, kind of thing. But at the same time, it's really cool because they're like, well, this scene is so important, let's do an extra long episode. Let's do like a 30 minute episode because of reasons, you know. We really want to add this scene here. <laughs> but it makes it, watching it, right? Kind of unique because you don't know what you, you know you're gonna get. You watch it, they're like, "Oh, this episode is three minutes longer than last week." Um, but yeah, it's hard to say here without going into too much details. But because it is the build of everything, right? And I have, but but I have to put this out though. Again, my spoiler, right? It kind of ends though, which I have to give it points for too. Obviously, the storyline is, is is ongoing, right? We're gonna have eventually as a three. I hope so. But it actually kind of like concludes a lot of the storyline. Again, I guess the Amelia. I guess the whole throne thing is so alright. It doesn't conclude everything, I'm not saying that. But the actual last episode, it is not that this is the end, right? But it, it feels like this is definitely the end of this arc. Yeah, you, you have like, here this thing is the sword, bam, let's let's go and get married. Yeah, it, it has that kind of feel to it. And then I also think it puts it up a little higher, right, as a top 10 this year. Because yeah, that felt like a complete, almost an ending to most of the plot points, right, that we had. Uh, building up there. But that being said though, I think it's fair to say that uh, it is one of the best enemies ever, um, but certainly fits almost the cheating as I mentioned earlier, having in this list, right? Because yeah, it is a culmination of all the plot points and maybe 80 or 70 or so percent of them get answered right in this season. So it really feels like, yeah, it, but, but at the same time, it only is season 2 part 2 though. It isn't like episode 555, right? It, it isn't like the ending of One Piece or whatever, and here's the conclusion of everything that happened. No, no, this is like the conclusion of uh, a few seasons, right? Um, so I think it's fair, but it definitely I feel it's in order <laughs> for not being allowed to be in the list <laughs> to begin with. But anyway, yeah, SCRO takes take a spot, and um, now we're gonna do some honorary mentions. Uh, I would say this is hard, right? I, I thought about more honorary mentions, but it is hard. I take this list very seriously, and I. 
Uh, I'm talking about more there, but I, I feel that the hardest thing is uh, honestly the, 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 the not, not the one and two and so on, but like the um, 10, 11 and so on. Yeah, the hardest part is like uh, saying, you know, what anime, two things. What anime is it getting into the list, right? Because I feel emotional. I'm like, oh, well, I really want to have the anime in the list. That's kind of one thing I feel. And also, just generally speaking, it's so much easier to say that, okay, F0, top anime, number two, okay, number one, also very easy, of course, to say. But then you sit there and be like, What's number 9 or 10? Yeah, that's much harder, honestly. Much, much harder. I'm not talking about it and explain some of the animes. I just barely didn't make it. Freaking Gubutani, man. I want all! Oh, this is like... There were some animes I really, really wanted to have in the top 10. And sometimes you want to do top 20 or whatever. Gubutani is one of those animes that I'm like, it's top 11, something, something. The reason why is that it really is a good horror, right? Simply said. It's a horror anime, season 2 here. But... I think where most horror animes get worse, precisely not all of them, but you know, they, they have like the premise, it's kind of funny, and this anime, the one, is good, the two is really good. And I think that Nino especially really carried this season, right? Like, I was like, ah, Nino, worst girl, and I was like, oh my god, Nino is maybe best girl, so yeah. Love comes like a train, right? So Gubatan is one of those anime I, I was incredibly close uh, to putting in to the top 10, but I still think it's just... In the end, you know, it, it is a tropey, uh, not having negative here, but I mean, I love it, but it's at the same time, it's like, it is a tropey cliche horror anime. It's nothing new, right, except that it is well written. Uh, but there are better horror animes too out there, so, I, so it, it's not like groundbreaking good or anything, right? But, uh, you know, it's definitely a good horror anime, and the two was really good. One thing I really spoiled, obviously, myself, because, like, you know, she's my best girl, right, it's, of course, Baccarin. I was like, ah, I really wanted to have her in the... Top 10, right? One of the more yeah, animes I most enjoy, of course, when it aired. But in the end, though, while I do like Baccarina, I still have it on my P P Twitter and so on. You should have my, my hand in my Baccarina, right? But, like, she's easily the best girl of the year before. I think the best comedy, probably of that year. But I think the two is, I want to say it's weak, but it definitely is a lot weaker. I just had to. Coastal Turf. That's why you know, when I make the list, subscribe. When I make the list, I'm very, very serious. I spent a lot of time reflecting over this thing, honestly. And I felt that in the end, you know, you have to say that Bakari Setudo is definitely much weaker than first season because it is kind of like, oh, it's the same thing again in many of the episodes. But I think that an issue probably more with season two is that there are many episodes that feels kind of fillery. You have this main storyline coming in the end or someone. But it's, it's a couple of episodes, kind of in the middle, where you're like, oh, it's like some kind of backstory, and they can talk about some uh, book or something, and then it doesn't really mean anything. So I think that it, it felt like season 2 had a lot of, like, somewhat almost filler episodes. Even though they do progress, of course, her love story, she finally gets kissed and so on, and stuff like that, right? But, yeah, I don't know. I uh, I really struggle with the Baccarina, yeah, comparing it to other animes, like Old Taxi or whatever. Like, I mean, Old Taxi is a really much more innovative anime. Like, Ida then... Uh, it's, you know, cray cray and so on, right? Baccarina is like, yeah, it's more of what I really love with it, but I don't feel it went anywhere really new, right? Of course, it spiced up with, like, gender bender and so on. So, I mean, it was a great season, but it was just kind of like, it's just more exactly more of what I really, what I really like, right? It's kind of a comfort food anime. So you really, really enjoy it when I'm watching it, but it felt like, okay, I'm just watching more of the exact same thing, right? Like, it really progressed the main storyline incredibly slow, I guess. But I think the issue was that I felt that they had... Like three, four, almost filler episode, right? And that's a lot in like a, a one season anime. So that's one thing. Another anime, of course, that I almost threw in here too, it's, of course, Mirugusan. Mirugusan, it's uh, an anime about a girl that can see dead people, about right? ghosts. And in the beginning, it's like, okay, it's an edgy comedy horror anime. And then it has this amazing twist in episode four and episode 11 and so on. And you're like, whoa. And I, I'm still, I'm still surprised, honestly, though. That it did win, for example, this uh, one of these anime uh, voting things, right? I talked about it on the video, beat the Mushutenshi. Because in the end, though, not that it's a bad anime, but I do, I compare it to something like, for example, Violet Evergarden, right? And people were angry at me when I did my Evergarden, or like my top 10 for that year, my first top 10, 10 I ever did. And I was like, I didn't put Violet Evergarden in top 10, right? And of course, I haven't changed my mind on that, because no. The anime isn't very good. <laughs> like, no. I, I kind of like Void Ever Gordon, of course, in some episodes, 7 and 10, of course, mostly, where you try out and so on. But Miruka for me is kind of the same thing, where, like, it has those few episodes that are really amazing, and then the other episode, like, for, honestly, Miruka episode 1 to 3 is bad, but it's like, oh, it's comedy, edgy comedy, yeah. 
And then I have to compare something like Mangatoro, right? Or maybe even instead of Gubatani or Bakarina for that matter. And I think all of these other common enemies are more funny than Miracle. Like Bakarina is a lot funnier. Uh, Gubatani is a lot funnier, right? And Nagatoro I think is the funniest anime this year. Yes. I think those, those animes easily beat Miracle san uh, easily, right? And then sure, Miracle san has like a better twist or whatever uh, than other enemies has in two episodes. But the older episodes in between, right, are just kind of funny. And that's kind of, again, then, I mean, with every Gordon, which is like, well, everyone has this, like, really amazing, sad episodes, right? It's sad and funny. But the older episodes in between aren't that good. Or, or, in every Gordon, I would even go so far to say that some of them are even bad, some of the mid episodes, right? Especially episodes. Yeah, but some of them, three, four of them are, I think, I think terrible, actually. But then they are, you know, some mid, mid episodes and some really good ones, right? Um, that's the reason why I didn't pick Miracle Sun in here, because nah, in the end it's kind of like, it, it, it's good, but it's not better than the other comedy animes. I mean, I, I again, I wouldn't even put it over any of the comedy animes I mentioned here, right? And in the end, do I think it's better than like, Komi-san? I put komi here too. komi kind of the same thing too, right? It's a good comedy anime, but I didn't feel it was anything like amazing compared to any other, you know, silent, uh, shy, comedy girl. Yeah, this is better. Is it the best in the genre? Perhaps it is. But again, I, you know, I, I laughed more at Nagatoro, right? I laughed more at uh, Gubutan and so on. So I don't think it's better than those animes either. But it's also one of those animes where it's always, I think, these animes are kind of almost harder to judge because I kind of ended up with having almost all these animes showing here now, right? And also, because of the other animes, but many of these, like, comedy animes, I kind of put them in around like you know 10 to 15, right? And I was really struggling, like, okay, which, which one should go into the top 10? And then I ended with like, nah, I still feel I need to put like Odd Taxi, that's like a really interesting, you know, very special anime, very cool storyline, so on. Okay, let's go top 10, okay. And then I was like, okay, but this anime, I, uh, but this anime is like, uh, the story, this twist is good. So yeah, so in the end, I kind of almost pushed out all these uh, uh, common animes, of course. And I guess in the end, though, an anime that I um, <laughs> yeah, my Twitter is like every one that I really, really missed out on. Uh, honestly, I feel like that uh, is of course none other than uh, freaking Zombie Lands Yeah, yeah, this is like also in you know in, in my middle year of 11, 12 something, right? I felt like oh man, Zombie Saga, it's so good. But at the same time, just like Baccarina, I feel this is exactly just more of what you... It's very comfort food, yeah, it's like exactly what you already love. Great songs, great performance, great comedy. But it is, it's kind of like, just like Baccarina, right? They, also, they almost feel incredibly similar. And so <laughs> so it's like, I put them all in like 11. Yeah, I was like, Baccarina, Zombie Let's Sega, and this thing and this thing. And I was like, the kind of 11. And then I, yeah, you know, as I mentioned, I picked kind of like a Taurus. This is the funniest show, so this is getting the, the num top 10 here. And then I guess I kind of hate all comedies. No, but I, I don't know, it's a little hard, honestly. But I felt that this, all these animes were kind of like, you know, edging on, on 10, right? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I was actually very close of not even having Fumitsu no Anata in the top 10, right? I was like, it started like 8, 10, or 9. And then I was like, honestly, I probably do enjoy both uh, Gubutani and... Uh, Sabel Hamafura and also Sobel Sega more than Fumetsu no Anata uh, as a whole, right? Perhaps, honestly. But the thing is that as I mentioned Fumetsu no is that it is really good in the beginning, right? Especially in the Google arc. It's fantastic. Maybe maybe one of the strongest, even the strongest arc this year of all enemies. Not the strongest, but in top there, right? But then the last arc is so bad. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I you know, it's so weird with Fumetsu no I really want, it's like, ah, oh, I don't know. I, I really... I, I put it at 10 because, yeah, it has some really good arcs and then it has the worst arc ever, right? So I was like, man, it's it's almost, it's so bad at arc that I almost threw it out completely out of the... And, and then I probably would put it in top 20 or something. I have to admit that. If, if, if it didn't make top 10, it probably would fly to like 16 or something. It makes, it makes it a sense when you say it like that, right? But the, but the reason why is because I honestly feel like this like honorable, honorable mention here, so honorable mention 11 here are all... You know, very strong comedy, usually rom rom coms, right? I and mean, they're all roughly on the same level. Uh, again, also um, uh, Botshan with uh, Kurume, also kind of in, in this range here, right? So I feel that if, if Matanasha can't beat those, right? Uh, it, it loses all of them, right? It either beats all of them or it beats no one of them, right? And I, and, and I have to admit though, 
I also kind of shaken out a bit because I, I couldn't decide. I was like, well, okay, if I if I don't think Fumetsu no Monata is number 10, and I put it, you know, behind all these comedy shows, right? Then I was like, but what anime is getting top 10? Is it Zombie Lens Sega? Is it Mirugusha? Is it Bakarina again? So I was like, oh. <laughs> so I, so I, it's kind of funny, right? I was the hardest to pick number 10 because I had so many... It, 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 I said every year, right? Because it's so much easier picking like number one like obviously coming number one now and that's the easiest to pick right there's no question in my mind this is the best anime and then like you know two three or so on. yeah it's easier right it is much harder when you get to that like 10 11 12 or roughly the 10 spot because then you're like oh shit i have you know five six seven eight really good animes that are all kind of top 10 and they're all equally they're, they're, they're all you know roughly eight to a nine anime right something eight to a five nine and they're all in that level yeah uh, it is much harder to pick which one should you take, right? Versus, it is much but easier to say this is the best anime, saying the best anime, etc. Yeah, it's much but easier like finding the best ones, and it's also kind of hard in the middle though. Um, but I think especially, honestly, picking the which one this girl should get in, and I, I guess I I put I threw all of them out. <laughs> I ended by saying that no one gets in. Yeah, but that's, but that's what kind of I mean. I mean it here. I honestly probably like all the animes more. Than to match the one after as a total because I really hate the island art. It's truly absolute horseshit. But because I couldn't pick which one of these girls I wanted to have in top ten, I was like, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Lily. But I was like, ah, whatever. They're all get, they're all getting eleven. Yeah, they're all in top eleven. Then <laughs> like they can all share the eleven prize pot. But anyway, let's go now to the best anime this year. We all know which one is the. You cannot hear that. This is the greatest anime in history of mankind. It is Mushroom Tension Course number one. So, I mean, I also got to assume most people have seen Mushroom Tension now, by now, right? When I was sitting talking about it as the number one anime. Uh, but if you haven't seen this masterpiece of an anime yet, let me give you the short uh, kind of premise. That's like spoiling it, right? But I'm going to spoil it also. So, Mushroom is an isekai, and you know, we have a lot of isekais. We talked about Zero, right? So, number one and number two isekai is all right. Yeah, the basic guy, slime, of course, that's right in this list. But this is the isekai, right? Uh, I think it is better written than all the other isekais. Uh, I would argue, honestly, maybe because I'm a fanboy, but I would argue that Konosuba is better written than because it. No, but uh, Konosuba, I think it's fair to say that it's a comedy, right? It's a comedy. like, And I think you can't really compare them in that sense. So um, if you purely judge Konosuba from comedy, I think it's still the best written isekai, honestly. But again, it's comedy, right? Yeah, it's not the, but it's not the drama or tension, right? Mushu Tenshi instead, he has the best drama. Here it is, that he has the best drama, right? It's the best character development. It has the most interesting main character and so on. Um, but yeah, so the premise is a guy, and I will say this thing though, and I think it's very fair to say, that when you first read the premise and the synapse or whatever, and you get into it, like before you actually see it, right? Uh, it doesn't sound that appealing, honestly. Uh, not that it was bad, but it, but it is just like, no, I know, of course, the truth here, right? Muscutanshi is actually a much older uh, novel that has been, you know, recently done, of course, obviously, now then, we made it an anime. So, actually, it's older than many older isekai animes, but when it started airing last year, then, uh, it really did feel like, oh, this is yet one of many isekai spread. So, that's the first thing I have to say here. Yes, it sounds kind of like, oh, I have seen this before, right? It's isekai anime, whatever, yeah. But this is the best one, okay? This is the best, okay? Its premise sounds generic, yeah, because this is the first one. <laughs> you know what I mean? The other ones are basically like this one. This is not the first isekai ever, but still, it's kind of like, it's a lot more like that, right? That's what I'm thinking about. But, but, to be, but that, to be fair, though, in the beginning of the anime, yeah, it is kind of basic isekai. He, he dies, gets into a new world, you know, has new parents, meets new friends, and so on. It is definitely, as a, in the beginning, Quite a typical isekai to speak, right? From a premise standpoint, certainly. But what makes it so different then is, of course, the character, right? the writing, and so on. It is the best written isekai. It's just straight up, like it has the best, uh, as I mentioned, character development, and so on. But just generally speaking, like just how the main character really acts in the world, and so on, right? it is so much more interesting than almost every other isekai ever. And that, that's a big thing, right? And this is, I'm still only here on part one, right? And part two. 
we get all these crazy emotions, badass fights, and all the all the good stuff too, right? And also a very interesting romance, all right? But if we talk purely here, why it's so good to begin with, I think it starts with that this main character, and I keep saying it in my review, right? And I uh, said it immediately when I watched episode two, is that this is one of the few weeks, guys, where the main character actually carries on his previous life, right? And I found that that is, in my opinion, one of the best part of potentially is straight up that Rudius has agoraphobia and all the issues, right, uh, from his previous life, uh, and that I think is really good because it makes it an actual isekai. Uh, I think that most isekai, especially these trashy isekais, they have basically no personality. The main guys, right? He's gonna, oh, I'm revived and I'm gonna fight people with my shit magic or whatever. Yeah, those characters are so uninterested because. They are basically just revived or summoned, right, to a new world, and then they don't have any of their personality left from the previous life. It's still intact, right? And they're basically a new person. So the point of being an isekai is basically a moot point, right? You don't have to be an isekai because you can basically be a, a fantasy anime. This is a very, very lazy way to write it, and I found that nine out of ten isekai basically these days are like that, right? Where the main character is just like, oh, he. He's like the uh, whatever, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like he's, he's constantly can't anywhere. And the second thing, of course, is that most of these guys have uh, the main character giving a drawback, right? Oh, he got the worst job or something. But then actually, he can use it much better than his best, his best job anyway. But uh, I think that's one thing that immediately makes potentially steps up, way far away from other most of these guys. Then that we're actually following a person that is exactly himself, right? When he it. And Michelin was just hated for a lot of his etchy jokes and his sex jokes and so on and puns and so on. But that, but it makes sense, right? Because this guy actually is still uh, his like teenage ish kind of mentality personality, right? In a, in a baby body. Of course, he's gonna go and steal the maid's puns and so on, right? Yeah, it's, it's funny, yeah. No, but I, I find it funny, right? It's just comedic, right? But it's uh, but also it's good because in most of these guys, it's gonna be like the character is basically reborn as a baby and has no memory, but it's still kind of an easy kind of. It's just pointless. It might just be an easy guy. I think a good example of that, a very good example of that, is Far Away Paladin, that we also had this uh, last season, that I, think, that I find was a pretty bad easy guy, generally speaking. And not the worst I've seen, but definitely not very good. And I dropped it. I was like, man, this is not that interesting. Uh, and I, I don't know what people are comparing it to Muscatanji, honestly, because I don't think they're similar at all. Um, the only thing I read was that the author of that anime admitted that he took a lot of much attention, yeah, I guess, but you basically made it worse in every aspect. And the issue, by the way, the issue I think with, for Planet, there are many, but the first issue is to talk about that the main character is Isekai, but it doesn't matter. He's an Isekai character, but he has like no memory of used to be, he just knows that he was Isekai, you know what I mean? And the reason the author does it is because it's laser, right? The author does that so you can self insert yourself into the character. Gives the character no personality because he has the best person alive, right? And he's there. But Rudius is an actual character, and I think that is a big difference, honestly. And, it, and I find it honestly sad to say that, but I feel that there's so many animes, right? Especially Isekai animes, where the main character is supposed to be this tabula de rasa, self insert, OP fantasy character, right? But Rudius is like a pervy little douchebag guy, so with real personality, real issues. And you know a lot of character cat growth right to have from that thing, but also then generally speaking, that because it's like that, he's absolutely no self insert. Right? Most people hate him, right? They don't want to be him. He's like, oh, he's an appalling, shitty main character, so on. I of course love it instead. Doesn't mean that I like condone his behavior, even though I kind of do honestly. But <laughs> he's not that bad. He's just uh, not reason about that, right? But I mean, generally speaking, for me, it's like no, that's why he's a good character. He's an actual character. Uh, that's a huge thing. And of course, we have here the. I'm not spoiling too much, right? This one of his into the anime because he has a father, but he fights a lot for his new father, right? Because he basically is like a teenager slash young adult, right? In his new body, and his father is like you, you're really weird for being my son, right? Like you're not really like yeah, you're acting kind of weird for being like a five year old, right? Or you're, or you're like fifteen, something. Yeah, it's kind of they have a really bad dynamic, right? To to some extent, right? Uh, and that's again, it's interesting. We are, I feel in most isekai animes, the main character just fools everyone immediately, right? Or and then basically forgets that he is an isekai character. He's going to fool himself too, right? I have to be fair though, Honsuki, for example, bookworm isekai, I think it's good that she basically figure out she's isekai. So, yeah, so it's not only Mutenshi, but it's. Uh, 
you know, I wish more animes were that, right? That they're kind of like, you're not really, you know, uh, it's kind of strange here. But there also leads this anime, right? To some great character developments. Right? But that's all about the drama and the storyline and so on. It also, of course, has this weird comedy, though, right? So it's not about the drama and the tension and the development. It has weird characters. It has a lot of sexy characters. Of course, you get slain and started with the, the steel bumps there, right? It has a lot of um, edgy jokes. <laughs> Tatsu hero. No, but I mean, it has a really good comedy too, right? And I think, honestly, in this year's top 10, uh, for my top 10 here, it's like a red line here. We have like Dragon Maid, we have Ida 10, we have Nagatoro, we have Mushuki Tenshi. It's like I only picked this pervy anime. I'm like, top 10 perv animes. All the animes with like extra jokes. They're all getting in the list. Um, no, but honestly, this anime is really good because it doesn't have any. Again, similar, honestly, to Ida 10, right? And I think that if you like this anime, you should give Ida 10 a chance. Ida 10 is, of course, not as good as potentially, but they are similar in the way that. These authors aren't afraid of like doing, you know, an etchy joke, right? Or doing an R joke or whatever. Yeah, they're like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, they have like no boundary. And um, they just do it, right? Yeah. Mushu Tenshi, same way. They're like, oh, like, of course you can have intercourse scene. Like, who cares? Yeah, I mean, this is good writing, right? But honestly, that really makes Tenshi also stand out more, right? Because there's so many, there's so few shows. It's not just anime. This is just live action or comics or whatever, right? Where. They actually dare, the author actually dare to do what they actually want to do, right? For example, this is not a big spoiler or anything, but whatever. Um, there was this classic storyline. Uh, I won't say which character, but I think it's a perfect example of what I mean here uh, in, uh, in DC Comics, right? But this female DC Comic hero, re re well recognizable, okay, female uh, hero, right, in, in the comics. She gets like kidnapped and, uh, you know, Taking hostage and so on, right? By these bad guys, right? And, uh, you know, and then they started, you know, torturing her and so on, right? And uh, it turned into black or whatever, right? Uh, and so on. And then in the next issue or late next issue where she appeared again, uh, it was basically explained, right? That they did everything imaginable, right? That like a bunch of five, six, you know, super bad guys would do to a woman, right? You know what I mean? Like they did everything. Uh, they could have done right, you know, and she uh, lost her powers because they cut off her powers and so on. So it's a really, really horrible kind of storyline, right? I don't want to spoil it and who, who did it to, but basically, because this woman has a physical power, right, by removing that from her body, she also lost part of her body and also that, so on. So she lost her powers, etc. So, a very, very, you know, gruesome storyline, right? Like cutting off someone's body parts, right, to take away their medical powers, so because of what? Very, very gruesome uh, storyline. Uh, but of course then, and this is not that old, so it was like internet of course at this, this time, right? Uh, people then, on whatever, Reddit, Twitter, whatever, right, were commenting, talking about these issues, right, of this female, this comic uh, hero, heroine, you know, being uh, in this case. And they of course were saying, like, oh, she got odd, right, they ganged her, right, they took all these men up there, you know, they probably did this, why, and, you know, people started, you know, discussing uh, that kind of stuff, right? Because, yes, the author didn't show it. But the author was like writing, you know, they did everything imaginable, right? That, uh, you know, a bunch of, again, bunch of evil bad boys would do to a poor woman, right? So to speak, right? So, yeah, like it's obviously what happened, right? Uh, and again, then cut off her body part and so on, right? But because this author, and I say who it was here, but I found the person honestly pathetic, right? Because the author then, after reading people's tweets and Reddit about it, right, goes out and then also wrote it in the actual issue later. So, so, that no, she did not get art. She did not get gay art. So yeah, he literally went out to write that. He went out both on social media and in the issues that having the cat talking about, oh, yes, they beat me, they cut off my this body part of me, right? And they did this stuff to me for like three, four weeks or something. But they never, you know, looked at my boobs or something. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I mean, and I find that laughable, right? Okay? I find that laughable. An author writes that a woman gets kidnapped, right? And again, the men do everything to her. And then the people are like, oh, so I guess they, you know, grabbed her oppice or whatever, right? And he's like, oh, no, it never happened. No oppice were ever touched. They didn't touch oppice. And it's like, yeah, but it, it, you, you wrote it, everything imaginable. I am definitely imagining they would grab her big oppice. No, no, they didn't do that. Uh, okay, I, I guess they imagined that they, or no, they didn't do that either. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, who would write it? I found that, that person pathetic, again, because... He wants to make this like dark, gruesome storyline, right? With with uh, this main female character, right? But 
he refuses to write that these bad guys would do extinct or you know what I mean? Like that's off limits for whatever reason, especially the thing in America. But but again, it's a cultural thing, right? American are kinda like that in my opinion. That they're like, oh we can have ultra violence but we can't have anything with that shit, right? You can't have that. Stuff. But uh, I think that's a perfect example of it where the author writes, and I say it again here, they removed a body part, right? And you know, me, you know, maybe people hate to see that, right? But I would rather have. Maybe I should know, but I'm, but I'm gonna say it here, right? I think for most people, if you had to pick an option, okay, you're either gonna get you know a pee pee up in your dad, right, for like say five minutes, or I'm gonna take your hand and I cut off your hand, right? You're gonna go gut style on you, right? You know what I mean? What would you rather do? Yeah, like I think most people honestly would pick. I rather honestly get that thing than having the guts thing with the like. Yeah, I think most people actually would kind of like go with. Uh, not losing my hand or my leg or something, right? Honestly, that sounds more brutal and worse for my body. Uh, people probably hate you saying that, but I do think that's probably worse for you to lose your. Um... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I think that's worse. And given this character, that's her. And I want to put out again too. This character, right? She has her powers in that body part. They removed her. They cut off her. Like, you know, she has a magical hand or whatever. I won't say who which cat is, but I don't want to spoil it. But, you know, like she has, you know, imagine she has magical hand, right? Yeah, and, or a foot or whatever, yeah. Like her magic is channeling through that body part. Right? She also lost her body part, her, her, her hair ability, right, by doing that. Again, that sounds worse than the other parts I would argue for. But uh, some people will get freak out for me saying that, but I think that sounds worse, honestly. But anyway. I say the story right, because I think that one of the most perfectly illustrated storylines, why, honestly, Mr. Tanshi is so good, because I'm so goddamn tired, right? Well, this is an old anime, or sorry, an old novel, but I'm so goddamn tired, right, of these, uh, yeah, weak, you know, cowardly writers, right? That cannot write, okay, okay, two characters are in love. Oh, they had sex? Yeah, like, it's not a big deal, you know what I mean? Um, it's just like... I know people hate Rudus, right, for that issue, but I have argued in my, in my uh, video about it, Eris is clearly the one that wants it, so I'm just gonna... <laughs> like, you know, I've already been over that for many times during the last weeks, but my point, I think that this, this anime is so good, right, because, yeah, the author, the anime have that, does that stuff. Yeah, they actually do have a scene where the character do it, right, you know what I mean? They actually do smash all the way, and uh, that is just like a sort of weird thing, right, not use an anime. And they used so afraid, right, of having that stuff, right? And I find that so frustratingly uh, cowardly, right, I guess, in most shows. That it's like, well, yeah, they clearly... And again, you like this anime, they're not, they're not showing you, right? It's not a hen, they're not showing you the actual, you know, scene. But, I mean, you see enough to know, and of course afterwards, to know they actually did it, right? And this anime, basically, which tension I think is so good from an actual general writing standpoint, but you don't shy away, right, from anything, right? Like, shit is happening and so on. And that, and I guess in that sense, it is typically like a dark fantasy, right? If you read older fantasies, I think they're all also kind of similar. If you grew up, uh, as I grew up like me, but I guess a little older than me, but still, if you read like the Conan um, books and so on, and yeah, it's a little more dark, more grimmer, right? But actually going all the way with the different stuff and so on, and character actually dies and so on, yeah. It's... Uh, that kind of stuff that makes the anime just so much better, right? And I think, again, the story I'm explaining here, right? I think it's perfectly exemplified of why I'm most so tired, again, of most of this other stuff, right? Because I'm just like, oh, man, this just feels so ridiculous to where an author can be like, oh, they did everything, evil guys would ever do to that movement. Except that thing, no, no, no bad guy would ever do that, right? No, no, no bad guy would ever do that. Oh, but they had a hostage for three weeks. Oh, I mean, yeah, but I mean, they just kept, like, punching for three weeks. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, why? Like, why would you define that, right? And uh, this is something I feel that this anime would never do that. Right? This anime would just be like, oh, there's sex stuff. Yeah, this anime wouldn't, you know, shy away, right, from having that kind of storyline. Um, so that's one thing that makes the anime so good as well, right? But all the stuff though that makes the anime uh, good is also, of course, the cast. It's not about gender speaking, but it has great characters and it has also great uh, case development and so on. But also, of course, eventually, that also great fights, right? So, I have to say that too. I also don't care that much about that stuff. Right? I always say that like, graphics for me, games, same thing. Right? I don't really care so much about 
uh, graphics, right? I think the least important part of a video game, and same thing with anime, right? For anime, I think it's more important though, because it is a visual medium, right? The writing, the plot, and so on is the best, the most important part for me, but like it's a little more, it has some value, right? The graphics, but I think in video games, especially, I think graphics are like who cares, honestly, in my opinion. Most most time, I'm just like, I want a good gameplay, like core great gameplay. I can still play you know, a NES game, right? If it's fun enough, you know what I mean? It doesn't matter that, but like me and my brother. Uh, spent Christmas um, a day where I was playing some old SNES games, you know, sitting down there, yeah. Like, that's just some good shit, right? Yeah. Um, but all that being said, right, this anime is really good looking, too. I think the best anime, as I mentioned earlier, is of course Dragon Maid is here, but this anime still is really good, right? Like, that has to be said, too, that it, it looks fantastic, the fights are incredibly smooth, and has an amazing action season, so on, right? And how the magic works, and so on. So, it has to go for it as well, though, like you pointed out. Uh, because it's definitely it's also a great point of it. But, like, yeah, sure, it's a Sakuga, certainly. But uh, for me, that's just like an extra layer on the cake, right? Yeah. For me, that's like, uh, it, the anime could be, or easily for me be twice as ugly, right? And I still would have the best anime this year. So, but I want to point out that it also looks really good, right? It's, a, it's an added bonus um, that I want to point out. But anyway, potentially, yeah, the best anime. Uh, I obviously could, you know, do a lot, lot longer reviews on here. But I feel I already have done so many reviews on it. <laughs> I, already, I already spent so much time uh, talking about this anime over the last week. So you can go and look at my channel for you know my weekly reviews, my episode reviews, right? Discussing different stuff like Ares and uh, Rudy, discussing his father, you know. So I think covered all this stuff. And I don't want to overly spoil it too much here, right? Because even though I do assume people have seen it, if you go this far in this video, I still think that if you haven't seen it, which I doubt very few hasn't actually seen it, uh, how, I will say this thing though. I think some people have seen it, but haven't finished it. That, that I could imagine, honestly, yeah. I think people dropping it, right? They get angry that he's a pansu guy or whatever. Yeah, I, I can see that happening. But I think most people has, have probably now, at least hopefully, seen it, right? Because it is um, probably the most popular, or at least one of the most popular animes in this, uh, this last year, right? And very, very, very talked about this controversy and so on. So, I think almost everyone has seen it, honestly. Like, I talked to that my cousin this uh, Christmas and so on. He had seen it, or the cousin seen it, right? Mother seen it, yeah. I feel like almost everyone I know that are watching anime has uh, seen this show by now, honestly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honestly. Like, this is like, um, I feel I'm talking to the choir here. If you get this far in the video, um, you probably have seen that Reddit, right? And I think almost everyone has um, has seen it, generally speaking. Yeah, um, that, that's one thing, though. Sometimes when I made this list, right, and I wish other, I guess, bigger YouTubers or whatever, right, to do this better, honestly, I suppose, is that I want to see people break new ground, right? It's, um, I didn't do it here, but, you know, like, when I do my list or whatever, I really don't care, right? People think, I really don't care. Like, look at my... Where I put Demon Slayer, right? Like, I like Demon Slayer, so I didn't put it in the bottom, but I'm just saying that I put it in top 10, but I didn't put it in number 1, right? You know what I mean? I'm not gonna be that guy that's like, well, Bandwagon, everyone likes Demon Slayer, I put it in number 1, people are gonna li like the video, then, you know what I mean? I'm never gonna be that guy, right? So, yes, no, I do really love Mushu Tenshi, and I know I have a lot of, you know, subscribers and fans who like Mushu Tenshi, right? Obviously. So, uh, certainly I expect people to like the video because I'm talking about Tenshi, <laughs> that's I suppose. But, as a player, I would never do that, right? I would never be the guy that's like, I'm gonna put it to number one just because people that I that like my videos previously are gonna like the video, right? You know what I mean? So people have to do that. I refuse to do that, but in this case, this happens to be the best anime too, right? Yeah, I'm speaking. <laughs> but but on the same time, though, I do wish I had. Uh, it is kind of fun when you bring out an anime that very few people have seen, though, in that sense. Like, uh, I did a top 10 uh, previous year, right? And then I had Golden Kabuki as number one. The anime is a freaking masterpiece, and very unfortunately, that's an anime where I feel very few people have seen it, right? So, the four is coming next year, or this year, I guess. I think I think about it now, <laughs> I think the end of this year, whatever. Um, that anime is a goddamn masterpiece, and I really recommend it all the time, right? Uh, but they were interesting because then I was like, Golden Kamui guys, it's top 10, and I felt that most people that saw the video were like, Oh, I haven't even seen that before, yeah, <laughs> like that. Then a lot of people were like, What, Golden Kamui is number one? I haven't even heard about that. Yeah, that, that, that felt like a really weird thing. With this anime, I feel almost like, I feel 95% that we see this video, probably more has seen much tension, right? But yeah, Golden Kamui was the, one of those that I felt like, this is, this is the best anime. And, uh, you know, I don't care if it's like the least popular show this year, right? This is the best show this year. 
Uh, but I think for for the fan for I guess for argument's sake though, Golden Camus is an anime that is I think highly highly rated, right? But it's under the radar. Yeah, like people they have seen it, love it, so it's highly rated. High, I think highly high score, but very few people have actually seen it. Uh, that's probably it. Potentially, it's more like everyone has seen it. Most people love it, and as I talked about uh, last week, more, some people hate it though. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of people hate it. But intention is more like divided, right? Uh, either people hate it or they love it. Yeah, it's like 10 out of 10, 0 out of 10. But I think that, again, this anime, if you give it 0 out of 10, it's all about, you know, either you can't go handle, right? You have a female character doing this, sort of. But, if it's, but that's a good point. You talked about the story I mentioned, where I feel like, why is Arthur so. He has to like, oh no, I have to, you know, rewrite retcon that she wasn't getting R or something. Like, why does the feeling doing that? Like, why is the feeling... I, it's just... One reason they're afraid, right, of going there or whatever. But another reason is, I think, just because, like, honestly, I guess in this other defense, that is like, they kind of imagine that if they don't do that, they're going to get that, like, zero out of ten people, right? They're going to hate it just because they have that kind of storyline, right? Uh, but that's why I think that they shouldn't care, right? Uh, if I write something, I have to be like, I wrote this, uh, I don't spoil it too much, I wrote like a video game, a video game storyline. Um, and um, yeah, I had the main character getting ordered, right? I had the main character getting that. And, uh, you know, I was like, no, this is in the storyline, I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't care if people are going to get offended by it. This is the story, this is the story I want to write, you know, yeah. I was like, this is the story I want to write. Um, but it was extra spicy because the main character was uh, Tracy Edwards, so it was extra spicy. But you know, I was like, I don't, I don't care. And uh, it was kind of funny then because then you know my coworkers were like, "Oh, you can't write it. We can't. We can't have it in the game that this happens to a transgender main character. That people are gonna get crazy." And I was like, "Oh, so you are transphobic?" <laughs> yeah. But I used to guess them. I'm like, "Oh, so you saying that uh, trans people can't be?" No, I was saying that. So you were against it. Okay, but there is saying the storyline. It's like I just put it on them. I was like, "No, I see you don't. I don't. You can't relate, right?" Yeah, I see. You see, you you, you just like uh, no, but seriously, I made this video game. I we released a few years ago, and uh, yeah, the main character is uh, you know is a footed bower, I guess, more technically speaking, <laughs> but. Uh, the, the people that I was working with, some of them, really was trying to stop that, seriously. So obviously they were folks, right? Yeah, they were trying to stop it. But I just kept, like, uh, being like, oh, so you don't like, yeah, I just kept, you know, throwing it at them. I was like, they were like, no, 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 yeah, okay. No. <laughs> so I, just, I just kept using that card at them, right? And I talked to the CEO, was like, oh, they, you know, and he was like, oh, I guess you can do what you want. But so I meant going to push it through, right? I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to get censored by your people, right? Um, it was kind of funny because, you know, normally, I guess they would use it, you know, they would be the people using that against me, right? Or I guess, whatever, right? But I used it against them instead. I was like, oh, so you, you're saying we can't have you know, something bad happening to this kind of person? Like, oh, I, did you call them weaker? You're calling them, you know, I was like, <laughs> I was just, you know, turning the psychology around in them, right? But that's kind of where I'm coming from, right? And um, for me, the potential really is the light in the tunnel, right? But I, it's just because it has, uh, that's kind of writing I want to see, right? Um, where the author has actual balls, I guess. And, uh, I, and I mean, honestly, as I mentioned earlier, the Ida 10 that I kept pushing up in top 10, it's like, yeah, it's a really, really enjoyable anime. And I do feel that it's also two authors. Uh, of course, they're both behind other crazy animes. And yeah, that's also an anime for me that it's not the, like the, the best, most consistent anime. And it's just way too crazy. I feel to have it in the, in the best spot or whatever. But it's like, <laughs> at least they have no limits. So I'm like, I really respect that, honestly, right? Uh, you know, I, I just really respect that. Uh, I, if anything, I, I'd say I respect this anime, Mitsu Tensei, and uh, Inaten. Those are my two, uh, number one, number two, because of respect, right, for the authors. I'm just like, this is people here that are just doing whatever they want, right? And I respect people that are, have uh, yeah, their own opinion, and they just like, I will, I will go with my opinion, no matter what people tell me, right? Yeah. Um, especially when it comes to writing, I feel. Right? It's one thing if, if you're an engineer, someone's like, maybe you shouldn't build the bridge like that, it's gonna break. Shut up and do what I want, yeah! That's kind of like, yeah, but I can prove to you that I'm gonna do what I want, yeah! Then, you, then you'd be in crazy, right? That, that's really stupid, like, if, if they can disprove you. <laughs> that's one thing. I actually had it at the work last year, uh, it was a guy telling me he wanted something, and I was like, you can't do that, like, I can objectively, there's not a work like that. And I was the one being like, no, you can't have that. He's like, oh, I want that. And he can't do it to me. No, but I want that. And I was like, but that won't work. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm not saying that you should always 
uh, you know, fight what you believe in. Because I was like, yeah, but I can mathematically disprove you, so no. Uh, you know, I mean, that's what I break, so we know. <laughs> so, but when it comes to writing, right, fantasy, creative stuff, right, you should definitely stand by uh, what you believe in, right? And I feel the same thing with, for example, Bayonetta, right? And I interviewed Hideki Mai once back in the days, and I, unfortunately, I was trying to get a job there several times. Now, of course, um, I'm an old man now, but yeah, the Proton Games. And, you know, I expect him a lot too. I mean, one of my favorite uh, video game developers uh, behind Bayonetta, who uh, and previously did be quite right? Because he's also like, I just do what I want. I want to have a sexy woman with, you know, big op eyes and like, I don't know, four guns, guns on her heels. That's badass. I want to have this shit, yeah. And she turns like naked and they fight with her hair. Like, who cares? Badass. Just give it what I want, you know. I mean, I wish much more was the that, right? Uh, like for example, this is a, I said one last thing here, uh, even though I read about it last week. But I w finally watched Spider Man, you know, I finally watched the new Spider Man movie, and I I didn't hate it, but I was like, man, it's a pretty bad movie. <laughs> I was like, it's a pretty bad movie for many reasons why. I made a video about it, checking a channel for it. But one reason why is in particular because it's so cowardly, right? I I, I call it an extremely cowardly movie as a title, and I was like, yeah, uh, absolutely, because. They don't do anything, right? They do the exact same Marvel Universe jokes they've done for the last like 30 movies in that, in that franchise. I feel they're really, really lost in touch, I feel, right? Because this is the same thing over and over again, so it's really boring. Uh, and, then, and then they didn't do shit with the movie. They didn't throw in any new bad guys. I'm not spoiling the movie I've seen it, but it's very, very minor spoiler. Uh, I mean, obviously, people have seen the premise, right? The kind of multiverse thing. And then my spoiler here, then, again speaking, is that they open up the multiverse, but there's no new multiverse. And what I mean that in the Marvel comics, right, you have like thousand different multiverses, more, but it's like a thousand different multiverses. And if I was the author of that movie, I would have been like, okay, so we're going to have, you remember the Spider-Woman with big titties from an exercise? She's going to come in here. It's going to be Mary Jane, Spider-Woman lady, big titties, she's a lesbian. She's going to have like, try to seduce Mary Jane. It's going to be awesome, you know. Uh, it's a Peter Parker or something. That's gonna be badass. Like, you know what I mean? I would have done that stuff. Right? I would have been like, like throw in female Spider Man, throw in this thing. Uh, what about like Shocker Spider Man? This is Spider Man. He defeated Shocker and has a Shocker hands, but it's Spider Man. Throw that guy in here. You know, I would be like, bam, bam, bam. You know, it's so much that you could done right with that movie. And they took the most cowardly route and the only multiverse open that all the previous, you know, established movies. Right? That's cowardly. You, you could have done that plus open up the portals, right? To many other, not the Spider Mans, but Spider Villains, right? They haven't seen the movies, Hydro Man or whatever, they haven't seen the movies. So I think that's a perfect example of what I'm talking about, uh, in not, not in the afraid to do etchy or sex scenes or whatever, but in the fear of doing something new, right? Or innovative, where you're just like, there, there's no creativity in that movie whatsoever, in my opinion. Zero creativity, right? Because they just take exactly what they're going to have and do it again, right? It's like a clip show of previous movies. Where, again, I expected to do at least half an hour or so of new stuff, right? Throw in the other characters, throw in Kang, I don't care, something, right? But uh, they, they went for the absolute safest route. Uh, and that, of course, is a Hollywood issue, though, right? And also one reason why anime, it's uh, much better than the West, right? In, in many aspects. But, uh, but uh, I think it's fair to say, though, and I always keep saying this thing usually, but... Uh, I think it's fair to say that it is mostly America, right? Uh, honestly, I'm sorry, Americans, but it is because if you go in and, and if you read Belgian comics and French comics, even some Swedish comics, European comics and so on, they are also much more daring and uh, creative with some of the storylines because they're, they're less basically stapled, right? They're less cookie cutter. I feel America, of course, Hollywood, but even most I feel uh, comics and so on, they are too much like just playing it safe, right? In, in both safe as in. They would never do, right, as I talked about, but we they would do. They would never go with the actual edge scene or whatever, yeah. So they don't, they don't dare to do that, which is really unfortunate. But at the same time, it's not only that, but they also won't do, you know, like any... They have such a hard time doing, like, groundbreaking new, you know, ideas, right? Innovative, innovative storylines. Yeah, they're so afraid of, like, having the storylines to be anything different. They've already seen before, right? And, and, and that, that is something that is very, very boring and... Uh, I guess watch this anime because it's so good. Honestly, it almost gives me like an essential issues. No, but honestly, like uh, this anime is so good that it makes me dislike, you know, movies and Hollywood and so on even more. <laughs> like that, that's my final review. That's why it's the best anime. No, but honestly, uh, it, it, it is so good that I was like, why can't other stuff be even be remotely as good as this thing? Like. 
Because I, I mean, I haven't seen a movie from from like America from the USA in the last I don't know four or five years I think that I can even remember that I think it's even had as good as this anime, not even not even close to that. I'm just like, how hard can it be, guys? You know what I'm talking about? Like, oh, it's not even close. Um, yesterday I did finish Cobra Kai though, the season four. That and that, that's the tip is amazing. So I'm not saying nothing good is coming from uh, the American. Cobra Kai is freaking a masterpiece, but. Uh, so I'm all just, I mean, you saw the good stuff there too, right? But when it goes to the movies, I'm just like, I can't even remember the last movie I really enjoyed in, uh, from... But this anime honestly makes me... <laughs> I'm just thinking about it now. I'm like, god damn it, this anime makes me dislike this stuff anymore. And to some extent, though, it also definitely points out why some animes are pretty crappy too, though. Right? There's so many animes, right, as I mentioned, where the main character just forgets who they are 100%. They're so annoying, uh, combined with... Um, I don't know, just being like this boring tabula, as a matter of tabula rasa character with no insert. Right? Uh, but I also think that's why most it's kind of so generic, right? Because they usually have like a no personality main character, no one cares about that, and that's why they're kind of boring, right? Yeah, and that's why no one really gives a damn, right, about these characters. Because, yeah, they are just kind of here. And then you're like, hey, whatever, like I can go to the next isekai and get the exact same main character. Basically, the OP, no personality guy with like. Five, six, uh, you know, no personality waifus, and the only difference is that one has blue hair and one has green hair, and otherwise they're the same. They're the same personality, right? Yeah, they have no personality. Or they're very, very like Moe. One is clumsy and one is this thing, but they have, you know, no depth whatsoever, right? Like that's uh, that's usually how it goes, right? But honestly, that, that, that but honestly, you know, because you have, it, I'll say one thing about that. Honestly, that point there. If you had a much stronger main character like the Rudeus, right? And then you have a weak harem. Okay, it was just a very strong harem. I'm, I'm not talking about that. You know, Eris is very powerful. Roxy is very powerful. I'm talking about other waifus here. But um, because a lot of isekais, and also other anime too, but the isekais, has a very like non existing main character, so to speak, like no personnel whatsoever, um, they don't really you know, interact in an interesting way with their, with their waifus, right? So if they have like a Sundra waifu, Okay, they don't really act, you know, they don't have personality, right? So the, the issue then is because if you say you have five generic main characters, right? And they all have five Sundry waifus, or I mean, one each, right? Um, they're all going to have the same scene because they don't have any personality. So the Sundry is going to do the same thing, right? Um, so, so even if you have, so the issue definitely is on the main character. Because even if you have like a one-dimensional waifu, if, if you, let's say you have, again, like Rubius, right? Very strong personality main character. His behavior with Ares and Sundra is going to be, you know, this is his behavior, right? And then you have another anime where you had a very strong main character. Let's say, example, like Kasuma is Konosuba, you know? That's one reason why it's good at uh, Isekai, because Kasuma has, like, good, not good, but he has a personality in this, right? If Kasuma was hanging out with Ares, he would have acted differently, right, with her, right? So, so this is much more about, I think, that the main character usually is so weak in Isekai, right? Uh, if, yeah, if they all had strong personality like Rudeus, right? Uh, again, the waifus could actually have doesn't have to have that good personalities, but it could be interesting. But now it's that they all have this tabula rasa, this blank slate, no personality whatsoever, and then they have this like you know more uh, yeah, just like the typey waifus, and they all have this active interaction with them because they don't have any personality to interact with. So that's you know also a reason the is so good. It also makes me hate other animes. <laughs> It's so good that I now hate everything else. God damn it, Musashi. You ruined my life. You, you, you can never watch anime again, though. I said it's kind of the same thing, though. In one thing with Kaiko Kaiko Sama, because it's so funny. And I was like, I have a hor very hard time now watching rom coms as it is. <laughs> no, but honestly, I was like, why can't more rom coms be like this? <laughs> I was like, no. <coughs> uh, but anyway, guys. That's the top 10. Subscribe. Slide button. This video was longer than I thought, but you know, I got into my little rants here and so on, right? Um, could have done more editing. I don't know. As I mentioned, there was a year where I was like, ah. I started, I, I was thinking, as I mentioned, it's not much. I could easily sit there and edit. It's not that hard, I feel, to throw in some clips and so on, right? Like some other YouTubers do. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes I want to do that, right? And I, you know, I do it, but I, it's like, hmm. On the same time, I'm like, oh my god, it's going to be so much chance of getting a. Copies or right? So some animes I avoided completely, right? And uh, but anyway, next video or at least uh, if I have time tomorrow, because I think it's tomorrow, we do the worst top ten worst, right? And then I probably place out to talk about it. no, but we do top ten and the worst animes. And I think about that, right? This year has, um, I think it has the worst animes in a long time. 
Because they're man. I mean, sure, certainly. Every year has a lot of meat animes. With animes like, ah, it's not that good, but you know, it's, it's like an anime, right? But um, yeah, this year has, uh, has had, I think, um, some really crappy animes. We were like, holy shit, this is bad. And, and I think, I'll say one thing here, because my, mine is spoiled then. Uh, which I think has to be true, though, honestly. There's like Fina, okay? Fina for me is like, it started out great, okay? So one was really good, two was good. Uh, already in, in episode 3, it, it was good, it has some good parts, but also it kind of started falling a little bit. But after episode 3, it's completely uh, shit, right? And then it gets worse and worse every, every episode. And I will admit, though, in, in top 10, I will probably treat those animes, or I will treat those animes worse, right? Than animes that are just bad all the way around. Uh, same thing as like Promise Neverland, yeah, like it's start, it's the one is good, the two is terrible, yeah, that, that is worse, that is worse, right? because if, if you have like a good start and then it goes downhill, it, it definitely feels more different than some other animes that are like a 2 out of 10 all the way through, you don't really care that much, uh, but honestly, I, but at the same time, though, honestly, I do find it feeling that uh, as a writing, it's probably the worst writing last year, uh, it, it, it is the worst ending I think I've seen in almost my whole life, right? it, is, it is ridiculously bad writing, um, it's just like, uh, appallingly bad like it's insulting to my senses how bad it is and uh, it really is like it really really is like promise nevertheless ending is terrible but it's not like at least it's like it makes that not sense but it's like okay at least no it is it logically kind of pans out even though it's really convenient but the film doesn't even do that they don't even try it but it's like whatever the end <laughs> the anime is supposed to be twice as long i don't know it is terrible talk about it tomorrow it's gonna be fun um talk about some really shitty animes yeah so I will see you guys and have a great day.